Welcome, Achievers, to another Easy Achievers Game podcast. The week of February 16th, a little bit after Valentine's Day. And of course, Elijah, this week I have a guest, and he is, of course, Emma Watkins Jr. from the many things he does. He, get, he does what? VGU. Let's do a quick test. VGU TV. Yes. Um, uh, he, he is big on Bing. Loves it. <laughs> I uh, am big on he, Bing. He's uh, big on the Twitter. Thousands of Bing. followers. Um, he eh, also a thousand, <laughs> a thousand, ten thousand eh. over. Um, Christ, uh, I'm gonna fuck it up. Not your thing. Oh, welcome not, to the thing. Welcome to the thing. Bingo. Welcome to the Good thing. On That's one of your that big one. ones. And of course, spoonful bits. How are you doing, my friend? Yes, I'm doing pretty great. I'm doing pretty great. Thank you for having me on once again. And there's been a lot of game news that I really haven't had time to process it. So now we can talk about it here and the very few games I played in the last couple of weeks. So it'll be a good time. We're going to have some good time. It will be. And as a reminder, we come to you every single Friday with all the news you think you should know about. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Patreon.com slash YouTubers for financially benefits. Now. We're going to jump into the show, but before that, let's pimp some things. I recently did a, oh, what was it, 20-hour first impressions look at Hogwarts Legacy. You can check that out on the show right now. I will be getting to something later on, but I did do recently a um, Is Game Pass Sustainable for AAA Games uh, recently. I, I would urge everyone to check that out, as we're about to talk about that very shortly with a very relevant news story. Now, let's get into Not So Rapid Fire. Speaking of Hogwarts Legacy, it's a giant launch as the Twitch viewers of the game set over 1 million viewers at a given point. And the game is the second highest peak of a single player game on Steam. Hogwarts Legacy was sitting at over 524,000. This is, of course, behind Cyberpunk 2077, which at, of launch was over a million, which probably will very it won't be a long time for that's eclipsed. But. Yeah, Hogwarts Legacy had both the uh, biggest launch we've I think we've seen in a while for something that is technically new. Um, mm. What did you make of the giant reception, uh, the seeming controversy, the giant, um, let's say, streamer war ish thing that was going on? Uh, plug at anything that like what you will. Um. There's a lot. Hogwarts Legacy. It's a lot. There's there's a lot to talk about. And it's weird to talk about it today, especially because mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the whole New York Times article. I literally woke up to this. So like I only saw what I saw in my dreary eyedness. But um apparently there was an article defending JK Rowling and all of her views and such. Um and you know that it's ties into this. Hogwarts. Oh yeah, it's I follow a lot of trans people, so it was the first thing they were talking about this morning. So um, perhaps if I find it, if I scroll through my links, um, I know that they taught the Natalie Wynn, who does uh, ContraPoints, one of my favorite YouTubers. And oh, they, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know yeah. that. I know them. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. I did hear about this. I did not know this was okay. A today thing. I understand yeah. now. I understand. That makes sense of what I've been reading. I was like, why are we talking mm -hmm. about this? Is that? Yeah. Is the, my Thursdays are very busy, so I did not see anything. <laughs> Hey, I feel you. My Thursdays start very late, so <laughs> that's why I'm seeing it when I wake up. Um, but yeah, this whole thing, um, I'll say this. I'll say this first off. Hogwarts Legacy as a product doesn't seem bad. Uh, it seems like a solid time. I've seen gameplay of it, and it looks pretty fun. It looks about the tier of enjoyment that I would maybe get from something like a Shadow of Mordor. Like, not game of the year, but a good time. Like, it seems like it's a good time. Um, the only reason that there is controversy about it is because this is directly, this is money. Buying this game is money that goes directly towards um, one of the most prominent transphobes in, in the world <laughs> right now. Um, it, it's, it's an unfortunate Catch-22. And yes, there's a lot of things where if you're supporting this, you're putting money in the pockets of bad people. You know, look at SNK being owned by... Uh, what that that country in Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia, I, the country yeah. in Saudi Arabia, the country. Oh, the country. Of Saudi, oh, sorry, Saudi. I no, you're mixed fine. my words up. You're good. You're um, good. Public but yeah, so like you can you can line your pockets, you can line the pockets of evil people all over the entertainment industry. But this is definitely the thing about Hogwarts, and also I do think it's weird that people are like hunting people down for playing this game, where it's like 
if you want to support trans people, definitely, you know, the best thing to do if you really want to support trans people is to just step out of this game. I understand as someone who all my problematic people that I like are dead, so I can enjoy their shit because <laughs> it goes to the estate, not them. So, like, you know, no one's going to be like, you're putting money in Michael Jackson's pockets. He's been dead for years. <laughs> So, like, at this point, let their children, let Apple Jackson have a life, okay? Didn't he name one of his kids Apple? Or Blanket. Or it's one of those two. I know I, Blanket I is real. I don't know the other yeah. ones. Yeah, Blanket is it. I think Apple was going to Paltrow or something. Um, anywho, the long, the long and short of it is, because there is a lot to say on this game, I think the game itself is fine. I think there's a whole team of people who would, who have been paid already for their work, but if you want to support their work, you can. Um, I think Harry Potter... The entire franchise overall has some aspects of J.K. Rowling's worldview, not outside of the trans stuff. Like people have been talking left and right about the goblins in that in that franchise and how that's kind of an analog to some anti-Semitic stuff that might not even be intentional, but it's just an unconscious like perpetuation of certain tropes and stereotypes. Um, and then also for people who were wondering, oh, should I play this? Should I not play this? It won't kill you. If you're a massive Harry Potter fan, I get it. I, I get that weakness to something that you really love because, like I said, I'm still listening to Michael Jackson. Um, but at the same time, your folks who are trans are going to see you playing that game and they'll have a thought about it. They'll have something to say about it. Whether or not they're going like, to make it loud and proud, that's on them. But, you know, it has an effect on people. It's not whether or not you play this game is not going to matter to J.K. Rowling, but. And especially considering how big of a success it is, you choosing not to play it, she's not going to miss that extra $10 or whatever. But, you know, there, there's a lot of things. I feel several conflicting things on this, as you could probably tell from all these words I'm saying. Um, but it's just weird. For, for me personally, I'm lucky that I was never into Hogwarts. I was never into Harry Potter or anything. So I just get to be agnostic and on the sidelines for this entire thing. But, um, yeah, I, I don't fuck with what J.K. Rowling stands for. And... Because funding her is what happens when you buy into this franchise. I have no reason to get into this franchise. But that's me. I know people have their childhood tied up in this. So, you know, I understand it. So no harm on my part, but others might see harm. That's all. So many threads to pull at from too many very, threads. The very, <laughs> the very interesting uh, things. There's the, what do I want to start with? Let's start with, um, I think... Um, it's obvious the boycott, I guess we can call it, didn't work. Whatever oh, yeah. the end goal was for the greater games industry, whatever they were trying to do, it's clear that whatever they were trying to do did not work. This game it might have actually been a net positive for the game. I think it was a net negative for people working on the game um, uh, because they were probably mostly either felt harassed or vehemently like put down just for working on this game. Um, but I think it was a net positive. It, it seems like it just made the game bigger, uh, which seems to be the case with most boycotts. It seems like the only real way is to just ignore it if you don't like it. Um, but that's, I guess, for the eye of the polder. Um, so moving on from specifically that train of thought to what you pulled at with JK Rowling. So it's, it is unclear if she was just paid a licensing fee or if she gets royalties from this. So I did want to make that clear. We don't technically know. Um, she is famous for looking for royalties, but she does have a lot of money, so she couldn't just not care. And I, she is kind of older, so I wouldn't even be shocked if she barely understands that this game even exists, or even cares. I guarantee she does not know this game. Yeah. Exists. She wants to check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or even cares what it is, um, because although it did seem at first she did care, like if something was named Harry Potter, now it seems like she's kind of in the background, kind of just chilling, not really. Her mind's elsewhere. Okay, you can yeah, her mind's. <laughs> Her mind is elsewhere, definitely. Um, I, I do want to propose a question to you. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a very hard question and something that I don't even know the answer to myself. But does the punishment fit the crime, do you think? Does the punishment of J.K. Rowling and what she said fit what she said? I mean, to, from J.K. Rowling's perspective, what is the punishment? Is what I ask. Because... You look at her, and yes, she's been ostracized online. Yes, she's been shit-talked a million times. Yes, she's been... Honestly, 
in any movement, you're going to have people who take it too far. I'm sure some vile shit has been said to her from the perspective of people who are standing up for trans folks and whatnot. And I'm sorry, I'm already interrupting you. I do want oh, to bring up um, girlfriend reviews was was kind mm. of the person everyone keep bringing up. Um, I think it's I think it's appropriate to mention that sh that the, that specific um, they do Twitch stream and YouTube content. Um, mm -hmm. th they seem to have gotten a lot of the black hate from messaging. So everyone brought that up. It's like, you know, if it's people on the other side of the argument brought up that you are trying to fight hate with hate and the other yeah. side trying to um, say, why are you even giving attention to this game? Right. And then you had uh, that side specifically on the gamer i don't know if you read the piece um from the editor-in-chief i'm blanking on her name oh, i apologize like a review or like a reason no they reviewing it no no she just meant she did a op-ed on the situation with girlfriend reviews specifically oh. mentioning how um and it's a wild i mean honestly it's wild if you read it i don't agree with it really at all but i think i understand what she means but she pretty much brings up that why do people care that a cis white woman is getting is crying on camera where um, things like hate raids for black people streaming have happened for a long time? I would argue mm. that I think we all kind of care about the hate raids on, on Twitter. There's actually someone that I do follow in, uh, called Amaze. He does a uh, very cool Destiny content. Mm. He gets that stuff all the time. And I think his community supports him lot in that factor so i don't know what we're supposed to do with that but i think i understand what she means we're like it seems like people are paying more attention with this but this is also a bigger deal i don't know it's not important i do implore everyone to at least read it so you can see if you disagree with either what i'm saying or agree with what i'm saying at least go read that okay. so you can get a different perspective because it was interesting although i don't think i agree with a single thing she said um yeah it's it's weird because all right i'll i'll reframe the question in my head because i was thinking like the punishment for jk rowling which from her perspective there ain't much punishment she's still getting her money i mean she's, she's turned twitter off and rich <laughs> between yeah and also it reminds me of um uh dave Chappelle's response to the twitter mm -hmm. thing he literally said uh i don't care because twitter isn't a real place and i'm like that's a good point i guess and they're also yeah. all rich they're all rich so why, why exactly do they, even they don't care? They have enough money to where they don't have to care what anybody thinks. Yeah. Um, they do but, have literally fuck you money. I think that exactly. is clear. It's like it, people like Joe Rogan. I mean, they could say whatever. It doesn't matter what mm -hmm. we say. Exactly. They they just don't they don't need to care. But yeah. for the individuals, you know, like your girlfriend reviews, like this is where I was talking about where I don't like people coming after people for streaming the game where it's like, hey, they've made their choice and you can have animosity towards them. But. Everyone, everyone forgets that on the internet, it's not just you. It's mm. several people who probably feel the same way that you do about certain things. So you sending that mad message, if it's one message that pissed someone off, fine. But when it becomes a wall of people yeah, <laughs> and everyone sends that shit, it's like, maybe don't be, maybe don't make a wall. And people understand, or at least most people should understand by now, if you're going to play this game, you're making a decision. You're making a choice. You're saying something about yeah. where your priorities lie. And they've decided they're okay with that. Now, in the case of, you know, girlfriend reviews crying and stuff on camera, I think that's more of a case of how often is girlfriend reviews or the people involved with that? Because I, I watch some of their stuff, too. They make good content. Um, how often are they facing this much controversy, this much backlash, this much anything? It's going to hit them different because they've never seen it. Or in the case of like, you know, all these black streamers and stuff who get hate raids very, very often, they might have freaked out the first or second time. But on on wave 30, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's a Tuesday. You just hit it like that's yeah. That's just what it is being a minority. Um, right. But yeah, I, I think people more, you know, look at that situation, make a bigger deal out of it because it is less common. You know, she's. I don't want to say she's had an easier life because that's definitely not a universal case. Yeah. Um, and we don't know her. Exactly. We don't know her, but you know, that's just going to hit different. Yeah. Um, so like, I understand why people might be dismissing of it, but at the same time, you got to understand for her perspective, it's like, this is going to hit her harder because she's never had to encounter this. But at the same time, you chose to play the game. 
that is lining the pockets of someone who, or potentially lining the pockets of someone who has a porn views. And you were cool with that. And so not everyone's going to be happy that you're cool with that. You got to understand you're going to get some backlash from that. So maybe brace yourself beforehand. But even then, maybe the back, the backlash is justified, but I don't think it's Ooh. good. <laughs> that is something I definitely disagree with. I don't think the backlash is justified. Now, what it, actually, let's let's expound on that. What do you mean by the mm-hmm. backlash specifically? Do you mean people opting to not buy the game or do you mean the response to people buying the game? Um. I think the response to people not wanting to buy the game, that's justified. Like, if you think it's bad to be playing it, bad to be streaming it, whatever, that's justified. I agree. I agree. I I think that's, and I I want everyone to, I think that's a principle people Mm -hmm. should have. If people think something, buying something's wrong, do not break your principles for any reason or anyone. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. I'm right there with you on that. I think the thing, I'll say this. I think people's feelings are valid. (laughs) When it comes to, oh, you saw a streamer that you really love or someone you really respect or someone you thought was a friend Mm. and you happen to be a trans person or just a really strong ally decides to play this game and completely, you know, go against the views that you hold so dear, your feelings of anger or disappointment or whatever are justified. Do I think it's valid to, like, make someone else's life worse for it? That's what I'm wavering on. Because, like, mm. justified or not, you're just adding more misery. Agreed. <laughs> like, they've already donated to misery. Why do you have to create it actively with your own hands? So it's like, I don't love that. It kind of just, it feels like a perpetuating cycle where it's like, now everyone's mad. But I also don't feel comfortable saying, hey, them going against your views, you have to shut up and just accept it. And not say anything, not do anything. I, I don't feel comfortable saying that. So that's why I'm like... It's, it feels justified because I wouldn't tell you to just sit there on the sidelines while someone disrespects something you care about. Mm. But I'm also like, don't add to the misery. So it's it's a conflict. It's a conflict. This is the contradiction I'm at. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to um, I want to ask a quick question um, and we'll probably move on because I think it's time to yeah. put this to bed because people rapid on Twitter fire. have people. Yeah, rapid fire. That's why I changed it to not so long, a very long time ago. Um, mm. I want to ask it. Do you know someone named Mighty Keith? heard that name before he's a youtuber um and he actually made a very compelling video about this i think um everyone should go watch it um it actually turned me on to his content i've been watching a couple of his things um i've seen this man he has yes. a yeah he has a thesis that he proposes in his recent video that why is it that why is it this game do you think why why this game because she does make money off of other things um she makes money off of every universal ticket um she makes money off of legos she makes money off of toys and these things. And he proposes that you probably people are probably doing it because it's easy. You can get on Twitter. You can say that you don't like it. You can not buy the game. And then, you know, you, you seem cooler for it. And then he says something that's actually very compelling um, that everyone is complaining about J.K. Rowling on Twitter. Who owns Twitter? Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. Who is probably, let's be honest more transphobic than jk rowling it's probably Mm. elon musk (laughs) let's be honest with ourselves uh i will give that that man Um, is clearly awkward and does probably suffer from some sort of um i'm not gonna touch that but he 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 definitely suffers from things socially so he probably has difficulty talking with people i'm not gonna i'm not a scientist so i'm not a scientist jesus i'm not a doctor Mm -hmm. so i'm not gonna (laughs) diagnose the man a body I, believe doctor. He, I believe he said he's an he has Asperger's I believe. That's yeah. Something. Which means something like that. Yeah. He has on some level autistic. Um, I will say this. It is very hypocritical to do all this on Twitter where there is someone probably worse. I would say than JK Rowling. If you have problems specifically in transphobia. And I do want to propose one more question. Why is it this game that we all have like. Like, why is it a statement when you buy this game, right? I'm not, when I bought the game, I didn't go, I want to fund J.K. Rowling. I said, I want to play the game. Um, so why, why do you think everyone picked, why, why is it this one, right? I have a phone. Um, okay. it, it, yeah. was, it was mined <laughs> uh, by children in Africa or a man in Africa uh, for cobalt. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say people died mining my phone. Am I funding the death of people in Africa? Hmm. I don't know. 
I, I it's definitely not morally justifiable, I believe, to buy a phone, but it's just something we've all kind of agreed that we don't really think about. There's a bunch of things I think we own that are terrible. We all own uh, game consoles that were manufactured in China at Foxcom, uh, Google Foxcom. Foxcom is a horrific yeah. hellscape uh, that people are literally made to work in sweatshops. So I just find it interesting that it's this game that we all chose that like that if I give my money towards them, I am now some sort of now like less moral, I guess, than others. I don't know. I'll I'll say this. I'll I'll say before I say anything to that question, um, I'm just gonna alert people to another deal that just popped up. Borderlands 3 Ultimate Edition is now twenty dollars on Steam. That's Borderlands 3 with all the DLC. It's the best price you'll see for that. That ever. is the best price you'll see for that. And I would so, do love the uh the DLC for that game. That's very good. Yes. Yeah, I just got back into Borderlands 3 on Steam Deck, so it's great. Um, but to answer your question, uh I think it's I think people have chose this game because the villain, quote unquote is so direct and so obvious mm. where buying a phone Kanye who, West who, situation probably. exactly where it's it's easy to hate on the very obvious villain because everyone I don't want to say everyone loves a villain but it's easy for people to rally around one bad person yeah so this game comes along and the Hogwarts or the it, uh, wow harry powder ip comes along it's very easy to rally around the disdain of that one person and why this game compared to all the other Harry Potter products, who's really talking about the Fantastic Beast movies like that? P I think everyone, even Harry Potter fans, agree those movies are kind of ass. I so, haven't even like, seen the newest one. I don't even know what it is. Exactly. I forgot it even came out, to be honest. I think I talked <laughs> to my wife like weeks ago. I was like, I can't believe that came out and just, just yeah. all ignored. Everyone kind of ignored it because we all knew it was, exactly. it was probably bad. <laughs> yeah, point exactly where that is one thing where like, the movies ain't really hitting. There are no books anymore. Like all the other extended media is more or less prying on your nostalgia. If you want to buy the figures, the Legos, the merchandise, that's yeah. prying on your nostalgia at this point. Where this game is also prying on your nostalgia, but mm. it is a new creative work in this yeah. franchise. And it also seems like, if not for the Harry Potter IP, this game will be a very basic, very standard, like open world action game. It yeah. doesn't seem like the Hogwarts IP is is revolutionizing anything. No. It's just making a very good thing of something we've already had, but adding the Harry Potter on it to, you know, give it that extra spark, which is fine. But it just seems like we wouldn't care about this game if not for Harry Potter. So it seems like this game, if you care about it, you mainly care about it just for that specific fantasy of living in that world. It, it's yes, there aren't too many games where you can 3d full full 3d fly on a broomstick there aren't that many games where you can wield a wand uh violently <laughs> like <laughs> that that is a what is it that is a power fantasy that isn't commonly depicted in games at a triple a scale at least yeah. but at the same time it's all through the lens of harry potter so it's that worldview that list of characters those monsters it's all through that lens so i think people have chosen this game a because the villain's very obvious B, because we wouldn't care about this game if it wasn't Harry Potter. I don't think you'd get as much talk about it, as much hype about it if it wasn't Harry Potter. And C, you know, I I, I don't know. I don't think I had a C, but one, one and two are there. C, <laughs> one and two are there. C, A, and B. <laughs> yeah, C, A, and B. There you go. Um, yeah, you're compelling, I, I have to admit. I don't agree with, with a good bit, but I think you propose a, a good point in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it is yeah. time though that uh, we move on from Hogwarts Legacy because yeah, at the end of the let, day, let let's let's talk security like it will. Let's let's <laughs> let's. Oh, I don't, actually don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't think. Well, are we going to be I talking about Hogwarts Legacy as one of the greatest games of the generation? Okay, okay. that's what now? you meant. That's what you. That's meant. what I mean. That is that's what, you what meant. I mean. Yes. Yeah. We will not be. No. No. I've. I told. I could tell you that in the twenty hours I play, I was like, yeah, I'll, yeah. I will like this game. I, I'm not going to think back uh, in ten years and be like, oh, this will be Legacy. twenty dollars in do, a year. I do think if the if not if when they make a second one, that has a chance because they tried. They really tried to do everything in this game. Let me tell you. Oh, my God. They really tried to, to do everything. There is yeah. there is a lot and it is dense. My man it is uh, it, it I, it's very similar to actually Breath of the Wild where there's just mm. so much and it's maybe you didn't need that much <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, when Breath of the Wild, the collectibles were the issue. This is like kind of like 
challenges and collectibles and other things. I don't know. Just I don't content. Know. Also, also just to move on. I don't think the goblins are Jews, by the way. I think that's very strange that people keep saying that. I don't mm. think they are. Um, I, I've had you as friends. I've, we've never talked they're about that. They're not goblins. <laughs> yeah, they're not goblins. Uh, I don't think they are. Um, I keep hearing people say that. I, mm. I don't know where that's coming from. It, I think it's an unconscious thing more than it is. I, I don't think J.K. Rowling meant to write goblins that way, but a lot of parallels are being made and even the extra lore stuff they're adding in the game is like, mm. I would, under I would understand, don't realize it. I don't think so. I, I would understand if they came from a, if they were like expelled from their former state and had to come back and reclaim it as like some sort of Israel esque situation. But like, that's not really happening. Yeah. And, and literally what I've heard. And honestly, I think it's frankly, a little more racist to say these things but the reasons they're given is they have big nose and like money and i'm like isn't that kind of racist for you to say that's kind of strange that <laughs> as soon as you see that you think they have to be a jew it's fuck it's very strange i don't know maybe i'm too close Weird. to the um source material that's entirely possible i grew up with these things but i just don't i don't see it i feel like i'm crazy when people say that i'm like what the fuck are you guys talking about um, hey, we'll just wait until they make the Fat Albert video game while this conversation. Again. Yeah, we'll have the sound section. Yeah. Hey, he'll be dead by then, so we're good. We're, uh, yeah. we're good. <laughs> God, he's still alive. I can't fucking believe it. He's still alive. Talk oh, about boy. it. Jesus. So no, I'm not going to go into that. Yeah. Um, the PSVR <laughs> 2 embargo seems to be up. Uh, you can check out reviews, seem to be uh, in select outlets. I didn't see like a whole lot, but it seems like a couple of teardown videos are out as well. Uh, go check them out. I'm sure as of uh, post. There'll be a lot more than they are of reading. It seems to be a VR system. Uh, the launch lineup yeah. seems to be very weak. I don't think anyone's surprised by that. They actually seem to just completely stop advertising this thing, as I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen a single ad on anything I watch. Um, yeah. I, I thought for sure I would have saw a Super Bowl commercial, if I'm being frank about this thing. Um, didn't see one. Now, I did miss some of them, so maybe I did, but I highly doubt it. I don't think... I, I don't think talked about it if there was that's a good point I, I would have heard about it so I don't I'm shocked that they just let this thing go and just not not even really talk about it aside of a couple blog posts that they put up is this something that you're buying uh at some point yeah at not right point. now okay. not, not right for now. 550 dollars which is more than the console it goes to yeah um I'm with yeah it's on one that. Yeah, I was a big PSVR 1 fan. I Like I said, Static is one of my favorite games of all time. Astrobot Rescue Mission, one of my favorite games of all time. There's some classics on that platform. Uh, I just bought a MetaQuest 2 last year. I haven't played more than two hours on that thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, not for lack of the hardware being good. It's just when I want to sit down and play a game, I'm on my feet all the time at work. You want me to stand up again to play a video game? Yeah. Like, that just sounds like torture. So, yeah, <laughs> PSVR 2, I, I'm excited for Horizon that's on it. Um, And, you know, the hardware itself looks cool, and I've heard good things about it. But I think they're really going to start the marketing push when I'm thinking about buying it, which is going to be when it's $100 off on a Black Friday a year or two down the line when there's yeah. a lot more games built up and maybe even some more free upgrades or just games I have from PlayStation Plus to play on it. So, yeah, that's what I'm waiting on. I need the titles to be there. I, I have, mm -hmm. I'm not against buying this thing. It's just it doesn't seem like there's a game that I'm going to play on. It seems like I'll buy it. I'll play Call of the Mountain. I'll say it's fine, and then I won't play it until another game comes out. Yeah. So I, I just want to wait until I have a backlog, until I drop five fifty to play it once, and then wait for like months for another game. Yeah, I, Astrobot too. You 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 say Ooh, those words, baby. And I'm there. Yeah, I, I probably will be there. Yeah, if that happens, mm -hmm. I'm going in. Amen. I'm going in. Telltale Series A Capital round, uh, Roundup finished with the aid of Hero Capital. We've talked about previously on the show. They were able to raise $8 million for the assistance with the Expanse Telltale game development of both Wolf Among Us 2 and an unannounced title. So we will be seeing them uh, fairly soon. They actually were able to do a roundup. $8 million, nothing to sniff at, but I am shocked that um, it was that low. But they don't really seem to have much value anymore. Um, I believe Skybound is also helping them, so I'm shocked. I, I feel like they would have been uh, gotten uh, burned by them, but it seems like they actually aided them a bit there, too. Oh, well. Good on them. The Witch 3 update accidentally added vagina models and pubic hair. This is via VGC. The next gen update for Witcher 3 added various community mods and one that slipped through the folds, pun intended. 
Was a mod given many female NPCs vaginas and pubic hair? CG Progore has a comment saying, quote, The next gen version of Witcher 3 Wild Hunt features several community source mods not created by CG Project Red, on top of the numerous enhancements created and implemented by the studio internally. Merging everything was a complex process, and the textures in question are an unintended result present in the release version. This is something we're working to address, end quote. Uh, how'd this go through? How, you, you didn't notice this? You didn't at one point check NPCs or something? The thing I thought about when I saw the story pop up, they removed her vagina bone. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. I, I'm, uh, it's just shocking that, that, that they have to be like, oh, uh, we didn't notice. I'm like, you didn't? That seems a little weird. Someone I, I should probably be fired <laughs> if there, you didn't notice. There is such a thing as wh when you download these mods, sometimes you download a mod bundle with a bunch of different mods in there, and maybe someone just slipped, oh, wait, it includes the vagina mod. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, wait, so, it like, includes the vagina mod. Because like, they're adding new textures and yeah. stuff. It easily could have just been, oh, fuck, that texture's in there too? Oops. So, you know, I haven't seen it. Have you? I've seen it. It's it, it sounds way graphic than it actually is. It's oh, just okay. like it's just a bit it's I mean, it's the 4K rendering of like the line and the hair. <laughs> oh, OK. Well. So it's like it's not, not it's not exciting. like, holy shit, you're lifting shit back. No, but um, it's probably more than you need for a fantasy action game. Probably. So, yeah, uh, I just thought it was funny that this happened the same way that it happened with Watch Dogs 2. Because they had the same controversy where, uh, do you remember this at all when this happened to Watch Dogs Two? Yeah, you could you could m angle the camera. If yeah, I like right, is some characters through? they were wearing dresses and like yeah. they ragdolled with their legs open. You could see it, and they were literally taking like PS4 screenshots. So this wasn't a PC thing. <laughs> like I remember, it, um, mm -hmm. I remember, um, I was speculating at the time. I was like, I bet someone made it as a joke and forgot to take it out because apparently that happens a lot. Um, yes that's what happened with um uh famously uh oh my god was it uncharted three yeah what with the newspaper oh the last of us uh yeah uh, reference yeah. yeah yeah that was an accident apparently, they apparently that in. was an accident and then they uh huh. uh and then they took it out and people were like wait it's gone and it was like weirder i might be fucking that up it was something like that hmm. um where they didn't mean to leave it in Hmm. Well, yeah, stuff like this happens somewhat often. So this is a funny little story. Just weird that who's you know what? Let people have their fun. If it's built into the single player game and it's only affecting you, do what you want. But it's I weird that it got pressed out to the rest of us like this. this and then they're strange. just like, uh, we didn't think it. Uh, what? You didn't check. I don't know. It's weird. Um, this is going to be a full read over uh, on Video Games Chronicle by Chris Scalian. Two separate. Social media users who say that uh, Activision Blizzard employees say the company informed staff on Monday of a, quote, return to office plan, end quote, which will see staff be made to return to the office by a specific date. VGC has reached out for a uh, request for comment. It didn't seem like they have anything. Uh, that's really all I wanted to add with this. I just wanted to quickly bring this up. Uh, interesting that. And I guess I, I understand they have to justify having these these giant office rooms. So they're just like, hey, this is empty. We need people to come back. So we can justify spending millions and millions of dollars a year on this office space. But it does seem strange that um, you don't utilize the obvious uh, benefit to uh, video games, which you could do it technically anywhere in the world and just send over assets if you need to. Yeah, that's my thing. I mean, I, I look at this and I'm just like you said, they need to justify spending millions on these office spaces. No, you don't just stop paying it. Just yeah. sell it. Like, if people want to work from home and that fits better in their lives and allows for more flexibility, let that be the default. I, I don't understand it. Just shrink your office spaces to where it only allows the essential in-person people. Um, that's my viewpoint on it. You know, there's no... A, any company, or not any company, most companies, especially in the video games industry, can just let things be work from home permanently and universally if they wanted to, but they have to justify office spaces and the office spaces look sexy and they you do. know the videos and, and i'm sure it does help with like recruitment and such. like recruitment leadership role like i'm sure you probably work better in person some people I was, let's let's make that clear sorry some people probably work better in in groups rather than if they're left to their own devices and yes. i'm sure some people are the opposite where like they're probably work the best if they can just log on a computer and work eight hours and then log out um I just found this uh, interesting as it seems like they're not they're not the first because I believe EA 
did this, but it seems like yeah. they're the first to really be like, hey, we need to come back. <laughs> like it's uh, We need to stop this. I will point out to um, someone at Bungie. I, I'm blanking on the name. I'm bad at names. Um, I want to say one of the leads for gameplay. I can't remember, but they uh, they quote tweeted this and said, um, um, a large portion, if not uh, a good um, majority of uh, Lightfall, the upcoming expansion for Destiny 2 was made remotely. And I'm oh, like, yeah. that's pretty impressive. <laughs> like, if, mm-hmm. like, um, because I remember Bungie actually getting fully behind remote work, and yeah. they're one of the biggest games out right now. Uh, and they've been that way probably for like three years now. So mm-hmm. if yeah. they're able it's to nail the same way. it, yeah, if they're able to nail it, it's hard to figure out why someone else couldn't. I mean, you know, Activision Blizzard. If anything, over the last year or so of news stories about them. Very resistant to change, very resistant to a new way of well, thinking make sure or doing that, things. E-Man. Oh, a lot of things. Good lord. Let's <laughs> let's hire the old Bush consultant to run our stuff. Oh um, my god. Let's uh yeah. oh what's that? The government wants to help us with Call of Duty? Why not? Can't see a bad exactly. thing about that happen. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's I'm not surprised of this behavior from Activision Blizzard, but hey. If that purchase goes through, which may be a bad thing in and of itself, but if that purchase goes through, maybe there's a cultural change there, and maybe this doesn't happen. So I can't, we'll I can't believe they like are voluntarily taking all this on too, because at the at, at, and apparently they uh, walked up to them amidst all the garbage that was happening to buy them out. Um. So wow. so yeah, uh, and I can't believe they're like just bringing all that flack on, like all the harassment filing they have to deal with now. Once that all all that goes through, like. Mm-hmm. Very strange, but I mean, but I mean, you get Call of Duty and you get uh, King, so I think it's worth it to them. Um, you also get Prototype. Don't forget about Prototype and Singular. Prototype. <laughs> remember you. <laughs> the kiss to the sky. You yeah, that franchise you. is dead. Yeah, it's yeah. dead. It's dead. It's dead. The second Singularity one was too, good. though. Let's fucking go. The second one was real good. Um, I will. Uh, this is on um article. I want everyone to go check out. I'm gonna be reading this over the weekend. Um, Games Industry Top Bid writes: We want to uh, or Xbox quote. We want to build on the potential we're seeing in India, end quote. Um, this is a feature by um, Anthony uh, Terrence. I want everyone to go check this out over the weekend, if you can, if you have time. Um, this seemed very intriguing. I only read the the first opening, uh, and it seems interesting. It seems like they're going to try and build up on the promising talent that they may be seeing in India, specifically with their indies. So I am going to be taking a close eye at that. Yeah, I hope now, they do. More international voices. Love yes. it. Yes. Oh, yes, there's. I, I. It's funny that when you think about it this way, like because of social, um, norm, economic uh, norms in many, um, less fortunate countries, like we we probably have so many brilliant people out there. It's just we can't get to them because like mm-hmm. they're in a poor village. They have like, to be born in Brazil or they, something. Yeah, like, like, blah, like blah, blah. something like this, like X Y Z, and there's an outstanding factor, and and like that always breaks my heart when you know genius is out there and we can't, we, we, we can't help to get them like the, the tools they need to make, to be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. So hopefully uh, Xbox, Microsoft specifically can help with that. Now, before we get into room roundup, of course, I ask my co-host every single week. This is of course, Emmett, what have you been playing now? You did say you've been busy. So I understand if this is going to be a lighter one from you this week. What's, what have you been playing? Um, looking through it. I have played, I'm trying to look at the actual, so I did play something last night, which I will be talking about in a moment here. The last actual session of a game I played was February 2nd. It is now the 16th. (laughs) So that is how little I've been playing games, but I did play something last night. Uh, I put in just under two hours into Foregone. Have you ever heard of Foregone? You've probably seen it. It goes on sale a lot on PSN for like $4 because I just always see the art pop up from Wario 64. Right. Um, for those of you who don't know, Foregone is an indie game. Uh, I, it's not a Metroidvania, but it is a side scroller. How I describe it is, think like that um, that 3D pixel art, kind of like a Signalis, where it's a 3D model, but it's kind of rendered in like a pixel arty form. Um, it's that type of art style. But the gameplay is very Dead Cells. It is straight up Dead Cells to the point of like you're collecting a lot of weapons that all have different rarities and they all have different abilities and different move sets as well. You're collecting range weapons. You're collecting like like range weapons. You'll get like a burst rifle, pistols, shotguns, energy weapons. Then they have melee weapons like your stabs, your swords, your gun chucks. I haven't had a chance to use the gun chucks, but those sound really cool. I just haven't got one with good stats yet. 
Um, and you're just going through, killing things, collecting money, getting upgrades for your weapons, collecting little blue chips or whatever they're called to get upgrades for your character. There's, uh, you get two skills. You got a healing skill, kind of like your Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Estus Flask type thing. Um, and then they have another skill where it's basically just a, a, some type of attack skill. So you can bum rush through a bunch of enemies to kind of get a quick burst of energy. Uh, and it's really fun. Uh, I've been looking at this game for a long time. I've... I I thought about buying it on PS4 for a long time, but once I saw it on sale on Steam, and I was like, oh, it's perfect for Steam Deck. And sure enough, it's perfect for Steam Deck. It is a very fun game. Gonna be playing more of it. Uh, it says it's seven hours to beat, which is why I started it, because I was like, I need something that I can beat, and it won't take me a month. So hopefully this won't take me a month. I'm going to keep playing it, and I'll, uh, I'll report back. But yeah, Forgone, very, very good game. This looks very good. Um, uh, the seam reads, Forgone is a fast, fluid 2D action platform packed with legendary loot and stunning pixel art. See, I love that, how close you got it off just with your own words. Um, exactly. And he's right. It looks exactly like Dead Souls. I mean, it looks exactly mm -hmm. like Dead Souls. Like that specific camera angle that they kind of nailed where, like, you're kind of moving the camera. Like, it's very sh Well, like, very when good. you turn, it kind of gives you more space on that camera side when yeah. you turn your character. It's it's almost exactly Dead Cells. It, it plays very well. So go ahead and try it out. It, you can probably get it for super cheap at this point. Yep. Published by published and developed. So they self publish this big blue bubble. Never heard of them, but oh, yeah, um, it seems to be this is kind of their first big game. Yeah, they got potential. I'll say the story I don't care about, but it is voice acted, which is weird for a game whoa. like this. Yeah, no, I was like, whoa, wait, this is voice acting? <laughs> yeah, very surprised when she opened her mouth. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> jump scared. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. So I have been playing Hogwarts Legacy. <gasps> Oh, the shit. game <laughs> no yeah um the game the game um God. i've committed a grave grave crime um uh the game's great if you're a hogwarts fan i'll say that it, it, if you love hogwarts harry potter magic this is the game for you if you don't this isn't gonna sell you there's also i don't believe anything here if you don't like any of those things i i don't think it does anything crazy I don't think it does anything particularly well. Uh, it's kind of like how, what I remember Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Um, if you can follow me with this analogy was they did a lot of things and none of them were great, but it was all done well enough that you appreciated the game. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is kind of what Hogwarts Legacy is. Frankly, there's way too much in it. I think they could actually could have scaled a couple things back um, and kind of allocate the resources more interesting. And also, I'd be curious to see how much this game cost. This game has to be 200 plus million dollars or something like this thing is meticulously detailed to the point where I'm like, this had to have been so much money. I'm very curious uh, to see that. And oh. uh, they clearly made it back with uh, their sales that they're seeing with this game already. Um, but I am very interested to see how much this thing costs. But it, it's good. Um, the story's good ish kind of. I'm not super interested on the main story. I'm actually more interested in three side characters that you get to know. Um, um there's a um um there's a school uh, a wizard school in africa i forget specifically where but there's an exchange student um named natia and she is fucking cool so so um apparently they don't need wands um at her school they just can do magic um and uh she has a very good line where it's like yeah, we don't really need wands, but I like it because it's very dramatic. And I was like, it's, it's very cool. Like, there's little lines throughout the game kind of like that. And I, and I actually do like the campaigns very well. Um, there's a character named Sebastian where his uh, sister is cursed. And, you and his storyline's about trying to figure out why she's having crippling pain, like, randomly. And we're, we're trying to see uh, how we can fix her. Um, uh, there is a... Um, side quest that i'm doing right now with a character named serena she's very cool she's actually a transgender character that runs the bar in hawksmead damn i had and a joke and then you had to say something serious <laughs> i was gonna be like oh she played tennis <laughs> so yeah serena williams voices her no but she she runs the bar and she's very cool you actually go on a side quest with uh her character when you meet a goblin that's helping you fight like the main a bad guy in the game that's very interesting so i'm liking like kind of like the side stuff 
actually more than the actual main quest because I feel like the pacing of the main quest is actually a bit messy. I'm not actually super. I want to see where it goes, but every time I get updated on the story, it's not very interesting. So I find that actually the things on the side that I'm doing, uh, how you're like doing uh, things in classes are actually much more interesting than actually what the main game is about. Uh, because I do like the ancient magic subtext thing that's happening, but like it's going a little too slow and it's not updating properly. I feel like the pacing just needs to be sped up a little bit more. Mm, um, but that's okay. really it. That's really it. I, I recommend this game to anyone if you've even had a passing glance into Harry Potter. But if you don't, you're not going to find anything incredibly interesting in this. You know, it seems like to me, just from the outside looking in, Harry Potter has the opposite problem of Star Wars in that everyone. Everyone loves the original Harry Potter book, the original story, and then all of the extra side stuff is like, eh, bad mm. to whatever. Yeah. Where, you know, Star Wars is the opposite, where everyone loves the original trilogy, and everyone loves half of the extended yeah. parts of the original trilogy. And it's but, like different half, depending on who you exactly, are. Exactly. <laughs> different halves, depending on who you are. But, um, but yeah, all the side stuff, everyone's like, oh, Andor, fucking great. Oh, Rogue One, fucking great. Oh, Mandalorian. Yeah. Like, yeah. all the side stuff people love. So it's just funny seeing how, seeing them have opposite things. Yep. Yep. But that's, um, that's really all I've been playing. Uh, I, I, Destiny 2, like always, um, mm. clipping away in the background, getting ready for the new expansion. Uh, and that, that's really all I've been devoting my time to. Hogwarts is a huge time sink, it seems like, too. This, this looks like this game yeah. is going to be huge. This game, I'm, I'm in 30 hours, 32, mm -hmm. maybe, I think 32 now. Um, mm. And it feels like I'm, I'm definitely in the latter half of the game. Um, I feel like this isn't, you know, I won't say it. There's a way you can identify time passing, and it is very cool, um, the way they do it. Okay. Very similar well, yeah, to the I'll... movies, is what I'll say. I'll also say very quickly, because I did forget that I did play this <clears throat> as I try to get whatever burp is stuck inside of me because it's like right on the edge. And I'm like, oh, please just get out. Um, Apex Legends had a new update. So uh, I was yes. tempted to go to this. What did, did you, so what did you think? Um, I've only played the new team deathmatch mode. Um, okay. Because I played, literally the only reason I played Apex Mobile back in the day was because they had a team deathmatch mode. And that's one to see what was up with it. And um, okay. it's fun. It's I played it on Steam Deck. Deck as well. Uh, and it's exactly <clears throat> what you would think. It is just, I think, 6v6 on fairly small maps. Really unlike the maps that they use for the uh, for the other, the One the, Life to Live mode. Yeah. Yeah. Last, that, last Man Standing? Arenas, arenas. Arenas. Oh, Arenas. Arenas, um, the 3v3 yeah. thing. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's the same maps that they use for Arenas. Um, but there's no shrinking circle or anything. It's just, here's a map, here's 20 lives or 30 lives go off. And then there's three cool. different rounds. Um, yeah. And it's fun. It's good, but it's just, it feels disposable in a way uh. where apex has never felt disposable because it is about preserving yourself and the tension of, Oh God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And you really are trying to keep yourself on that razor's edge of life. You're not getting that as much when you can just respond. Um, but it is a good way to just get used to combat, like just go off. Like I, I remember the first round I was really shaking off the dust cause I haven't played apex in a long time. I was like, oh man, I need to get back into it. By the next round I had a good 10 kills. And so, Ooh. you know, I was feeling good. I was feeling good. So it is a good way to like warm up maybe if you're wanting to yeah. start up a session. Um, but yeah, the, the new update is cool. I will say, uh, if you're listening to this right now, go ahead and log on cause they're giving away crypto for free. And next week they're giving away ash for free. Currency? Uh, no, just like the character. I know, I know. I know. Oh, wow. <laughs> God damn, I just got that. Um, so yeah, if you want those characters completely for free, especially for me, because I bought all the characters on PlayStation, and now I'm playing on Steam and all these other places where I don't have anything, go ahead and boot it up on those Inexcusable platforms. that they don't have. Yeah. We all they, know why. We, we all yeah. know why they're not doing it, but it's well, inexcusable. I have hope that they're going to do it because they shut down Apex Mobile because they want to make a connected, they want to make a version of Apex Mobile that's connected to the main game. So uh -huh. if they're trying to do that with mobile, I can only imagine they're going to just connect everything together. And that's what I'm dying for. Because, man, when this thing's on Steam, well, it's on Steam Deck now and I can play it. But when I got my PS4 progress on there, it's over for everybody. It's over. Ooh, I'm so excited for when they do that because I've been claiming the PS Plus packs on playstation and i don't play I'm, on playstation so i literally have them connected my account and when they when they do it i'm going in like i'm, mm -hmm. I'm linking the account i will say this and we'll be quick what did you make of apex mobile shutting down and frankly to me um kind of inexcusable how they kind of just said 
buy. Yeah. They're not transferring currency. They're not giving you any bonus. It, to me, it seemed hmm. inexcusable, especially since virtual currency does not cost them money to give you. It's not. It, it, there's not inflation yeah. tied to them. You can just give people currency. So I found that pretty uh, important, if I'm being honest. I'll say this. Well, first off, I've been doing the same thing with the PlayStation Plus packs and also Game Pass. They give you like gold charms for all the guns all, yep. somewhat often. So I've been yep. claiming that too. Yeah, well, um, yeah. But to answer your question, Apex Mobile shutting down. I do think because Apex Mobile is not a bad product. I played nope. it. It was very much so emulating that classic Apex feel on a phone. And if you had a controller, especially played very well. Um, I think it's fucked up for the, the development team that was helping aid respawn with that game, just for them to Get have dumped. the rug pulled out from under them. And, and then even like not only that game, but also battlefield mobile got canceled yep. and the, the dev studio closed. The like, dev studio closed after they bought them. So they bought them yes. and burned that money for four years. That is mm -hmm. I'm how does that happen? Like who is at EA? That allowed a studio to be purchased, and you don't get anything out of the them. same. The same person who bought Pandemic Studios, the same oh, company who bought Maxis, all this shit. Like it's, it's uh, EA man. Motive, it's EA. not motive. Um, visceral. Yeah, it's visceral like, as well. Just, EA is. <laughs> I feel I'm of the mind that like without respawn and like sports games, I feel like they would have just out of sheer incompetence like be gone from this industry oh because it sure. seems like they have trouble managing i don't understand mm -hmm. why they had one of the best rpg studios ever made and now they've made two of the one of some of the worst things we've seen in like the last 10 years from yeah. like the grace of falls it just seems so strange like what's going on dice on the shooter side as well where everyone yes. loves battlefield 3 everyone loves four. battlefield 4 eventually once they fix the issues but they did the same thing they did with battlefield 4 three times over yeah. Where you release it broken and you try to get it better, people got sick of their shit by the time 2042 came out. So, blah. yeah, um, yeah, EA, it is what it is. But yeah, for the mobile game, I think it's fucked up that they're just cutting it off. I think a lot of games got cut off in that week, like Rumbleverse shut down, Rumbleverse? my beloved Knockout City. It shut seemed down like as well. it seemed like everyone was like, just announce it now, like like so mm -hmm. we can all be like we're not the week, like this is well, the week we don't have to be focused on. Let's just do it all now and get it. Over. Uh, I I think it's the I think and it's quarterly earnings time in fiscal year. That's true. Yeah. Fiscal year. And then also just the fact of if you're, if you're someone like a knockout city, they care and also have the resources to like give, let it go out with a bang. It's not yeah. just, it's I not just, it. we're shutting down servers on this date. Good luck. It's not like your crossfire X's where they're like, fuck you by. Uh, yeah. It's not like your apex mobile where they're like, fuck you by, yeah. but apex mobile, the mobile market, are not the same types of people who will get on Twitter and scream at you. Mm. Like that is a market of, oh, we're playing this game, and then if it's gone the next day, they might be sad for a little bit, but they'll 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 hop on Fortnite, they'll hop on whatever God. other mobile game is up there for them. They'll yeah. hop on fucking Modern Combat Five. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, Raid but, Shadow yeah. Legends. It, honestly, yes, <laughs> that might be their next addiction. Um, so yeah, I don't think they care about the backlash from the mobile market from those players personally, but you know, everyone's That's shutting sad. everything down right now. You just hope that if they're, if they are going to shut it down, don't let it go out with a whimper, at least like a small bang, like your rumble versus doubling the XP for the next month. If like you're something. closing the game, why not give them everything? Yeah. Just have Apex a fucking Legend. sellout. If you're going yeah. to close the game, why do you care? Marvel Avengers, at least, at least give them all the credit. Um, or sorry, give like spawn them all you want with how royally they fucked that game up. But like, at least they're like, hey, we're going to just give you everything. We're going to keep this, this service up as long as we can. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Peace out. Like, yeah, at least, you give, at, least, at least do something like that. I do appreciate Knockout again. Uh, 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 that's under Ubisoft, right? I'm not, I'm not crazy. Oh, no, it, it was it was originally EA, but then they bought back the rights that's and self-published right. the last year. That's right. That's right. It was EA. And then they left. Um, curious what, what they're going to be doing now. But yeah, th that's a good example of like, hey, we're going to have a celebration of, of the game. Not like we're going to close mm -hmm. by like very, very good point. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. R.I.P. Velen. I almost wore my Knockout City shirt today, but I feel like every time I change. wear that shirt on a podcast. On camera, if you want. 
God, no. Right Every time I wear that shirt on a podcast, something bad happens because I wore that shirt on uh, Welcome to the Thing, and then the next week it, sh- it closed. <laughs> so like, I, don't want, I don't want that to happen to me again. Uh, we have a sur- so much heartbreak. <laughs> this is Rumor Roundup. Uh, rumor Roundup um, an hour into the show. We have a surprising early look at Dragon Age Dreadwolf as a leaker on Reddit has shown off some gameplay. This comes from user Revenchisto. Shared some screenshots and most interesting, a short gameplay snippet. It features a knight character, maybe a Templar or Grey Warden from the series, and a very close third person over the soldier fear, incredibly similar to God of War 2018. It features some content of only about five seconds and is still up as of recording. It features action hack and slash gameplay over the more uh, RPG heavy combat that is featured in the rest of the series. Dragon Age Dreadwolf will be the fourth entries in the series and will be the first direct continuation of a storyline proposed in a previous game. Um, a couple of quick notes to this. There was a longer gameplay footage. Uh, it seems to have been uh, wiped. I could not find it. Uh, so I, I cannot find the. I think it was almost 30 minutes of stuff. from the game. Wow. Um, wow. Some, something, yeah, something like that. Uh, and this is alpha footage, to be fair. And apparently this game has not even apparently. I know from reporting on this game. This game has been through the grinder from. It was originally going to be a multiplayer game. Then it got completely scrapped. Then it's going to be a single player game. Apparently from this specific leaker, you can still tell there are multiplayer aspects from that game. There's a hub that that Mm. still kind of works. That was going to be like the social load that they kept from the game. It seems like this game might be a mess. Maybe it's a good mess. Maybe it's a great mess. Maybe you won't even tell. But uh, this is definitely a game that doesn't know really, uh, it seems, its identity. Because as a Dragon Age fan, when I saw that, I went, what is this game? This is not a Dragon Age game, so what is it? Is it a a, 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 a spin-off? Very strange, because we're continuing hmm. a storyline proposed in Dragon Age Inquisition's DLC. Um, uh, oh my god, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, the Traveler? Or something like that? Um, sure. <laughs> I could tell you. I know. <laughs> I, I was I was so low on that one. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you remember what it's called. But uh, so like, wh- why are why is it so different? I guess it's to appeal to other people. Again, it's alpha. Also, it's mm. a small snippet of the game. Uh, the way it looks, honestly, it kind of looks like near the end of the game because the way it's hap- like the way things are happening, uh, it seems like a big attack together. But like, th- obviously, things are incomplete. So like, who knows like what's gonna actually look like? I don't mm. know. It seems like this game still might be another few years. I would be shocked if we see it uh, next year, even. So we'll see. Um, I don't know. Did what, what did you make when you first saw this? And do you even care? I'm being, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Dragon Age is one of those franchises where I can see myself getting into it, but in very specific circumstances. Because I've talked mm. about how medieval fantasy, that whole vibe just doesn't really do it for me ever at all. But I also put like nearly 200 hours into Skyrim. So it's less the setting and more if you give me good gameplay in that setting, I'll I'll accept the setting fully. I just got to get good gameplay that keeps me hooked. Yeah. And more <laughs> Dragon Age has always been like, oh, this is the tactical RPG where you can do real time or you can pause it. Or in the case of... Uh, in the case of Dragon Age 2, it's like, oh, you're managing cooldowns all the time or, you know, all this other stuff. Inquisition is very similar to kind of a hybrid of both, honestly. Um, God of War combat sounds more appealing to me. I like God of War's combat. I think yeah. it's good. I still think, even though this does appeal to me and they're definitely going for the target demographic of people who don't play these nerdy RPGs, like what's yeah. going to get them in? Yeah. Even knowing that, it still feels weird that this is a Dragon Age game with this type of combat. That just feels like that feels just off. Like it feels like not of the identity. Dude, dude I've, I love Dragon Age Origins. I love Dragon Age 2. I love Dragon Age Inquisition. I love the lore. I love reading about it. I love the comics. I'm a fucking nerd. Watching that gameplay snippet, I was like, what the fuck is this? What mm-hmm. is this? This is now, not Dragon Age. If I wanted God of War, I would go play God of War. Now and I will give it to him. The, it, oh my god! I will <laughs> say, wait for that game. yeah, yeah, it does kind of look cool. I I will say the animations are very fluid. Bioware, specifically in the Dragon Age and in Mass Effect, are not known for good animations. They recycle the same ones. They mm-hmm. use the same ones for Mass Effect One and Three. If you know what I'm talking about, we've all seen the same death animation for every character. The drop in the back, or so, like it's all very. <laughs> 
known. Now, I will give it to them. It looks very fluid. The way that uh, the combat was working, that is unlike any Bioware game we've seen previously, because it actually did have really good animations. And I remember Andromeda kind of having some okay um, animations, too. But mm. there are oh. improvements, and the engine does seem to be working a little bit better, too. But I don't know. Dragon Age 2, or sorry, Dragon Age Inquisition... Um, specifically like when you were a mage, it was very bombastic and very cool. I can't imagine being that cool with the camera that close, but maybe when you're a mage, it's different. I don't know. I'm just not a fan. Hopefully there are different modes you can play in a la Dragon Age Inquisition, where you could play as the giant tactical overlay like you could in Origins on PC, um, or you could play a traditional like kind of close over the uh, head combat. You could set your uh characters to do other stuff or you can manually do things i don't know what were you gonna say i was gonna say i'm thinking about this this feels very much so like a fallout 2 to fallout 3 situation where if you are a hardcore fan of fallout 1 and 2 and the whole top down technical yeah. rpg-ness of it yeah. and then what three 20 years out. later yeah. yeah three comes out and it's this first person third person shooter it's like what the fuck yeah. I think Dragon Age fans are feeling that right now. The only difference here is you don't have 15 years in between the last one. You don't have that, I'm just happy we're getting another one feeling. Yeah. It's been less than a decade since And we're all very worried it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, I, and this I mean, is like, this is the third strike, let's be honest. Yeah, like, yes, they, it they is. They fucked up Mass Effect. They fucked up a new IP. Dragon Age is their last golden goose that That's hasn't shat itself. That's so... So we hopefully this works out. I'm hoping for you Dragon Age fans that this is good because I really don't think I'm going to play this either way. But for the love of God, I just hope this game ends up being good. And like you said, oh my I don't God. if it's good, it's early. a failure. If it's good, it's a failure. It has to be great. This it has is, to be like a nine out of ten. Bi it's Bioware, man. What happened? I know we lost everybody. I know we lost Casey. We lost Casey Hudson seven times, it feels like. From Bioware, like the man came, left, came, left. It, like, I mean, uh, that's what happened to every studio. Like, same thing with Dice, where the yeah. reason they can't make those games is because all the people who made the last game gone. left after it was done. They're all gone. So, so yeah, at the end of the day, is it even Bioware anymore? I don't fucking know. It, it just it's strange that we're getting just getting like a totally different game. I don't know. I I, I hope hey, they people start... make games and these aren't the same people, so they're making something different. Yeah, yeah. I, I man, maybe I should be more open to that, and I shouldn't be quick to be like, "It's not my Dragon Age." Um, but hashtag not my Dragon. Uh, hashtag not my Dragon Age. Um, <laughs> but it, I don't know. It. I just hate that the first thing I saw was I'm worried, and I was already worried. Everyone's already gone. Like it's so like mm -hmm. Mac Walters left. I think two weeks ago I covered on the show, which he was the main writer on pretty much every single game. Uh, oh, pretty Christ. much every Mass Effect and all these things. And he's gone from Bioware now. So it's like, really, I think literally he was the last one. I think he is, mm. I, I, if off the top of my head, I, I, I can't think of, uh, yeah, with real standing at the studio from the, from like, yeah, I think he was like the last. So, you lookers. <sighs> hmm. Tom Henderson. Well, yeah. Uh, no, 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 what do you want? I was about to say no. Close, well, we got another that. story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom Henderson via Insider Gaming. Does trusted sources uh, say that there will be a wireless earbud and a new wireless headset launch for the PS5 towards the end of fiscal year of 2023, which is of course between April 2023 and March of 2024? They're currently known as Project Nomad, uh, which is the wireless earbuds. They will have a battery life of around five hours, and they seem to be very similar to the popular Apple AirPod Pros. The, the headset is called Project Voyager and seems to possibly be a replacement for the N-Zone H7 headset. No price was given for any of them. Uh, quick notes, I don't really have anything else to add after what I say. Um, these have way, way too cool names for what they are. They're just they're just headsets. So like they sound way cooler than it needs to be. Um, the uh, wireless earbuds look cool um, because uh, uh, they had like a little picture of, of what they might look like. Cool. And the headset, uh, if anything, replacing the end zones, uh, I'm happy for because those things look fucking those are eyesores, to be frank. They look overly designed in the same it way the looks, PS5 itself does. Looks yeah, the same way. Yes. The, the, when I saw first off, end zone is a stupid name. That sounds like you're trying to be a cool video game guy. What your mm -hmm. PlayStation? What's going on with that? It's and like Mad Cat's little brother. Yes. Yes. It's like Mad Cat. It's like, what? 
what is this? It doesn't, it doesn't even look like it's quality made either. Like uh, you, I'll say PS5, it looks gross, but at least it does look like it's quality material. Like it looks like it, it, they put effort into it. The end zone's like, sure. it just looks, it just looks, I don't know, it looks gross. <laughs> I don't know. What do you have to add on, on this? Um, I'm not buying a console specific pair of earbuds, especially if they're only going to give me five hours of battery life. When I have my Samsung buds, they give me at least eight or yeah. 12 in the last iteration. Yeah. Um, so like, nah, that I'm not going for that. I have a good enough headset with the steel series where yep. it, it has Bluetooth in it on top of connecting to a computer or console. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. the fuck am I doing with another thing? I try not to get console specific anything now that I am more agnostic with where I play because if my PlayStation headset doesn't work my Xbox, I'm going to be mad and vice versa with PC and so on and so forth. So like, I need everything to work together. Um, good for them making all these things, but I don't know. This just feels like we we talk about how PlayStation is a very traditional console manufacturer company in the same way where they, they're just still thinking about consoles in the same way that they did for PS2, PS3, all that, where it's yeah. like, oh, we got to have the product line coming out with the console. We want them to buy hardware, so we got to make more hardware for them to buy with the hardware. It's like, <laughs> you could just sell your games and have a bunch of different points of entry, yeah. but, you know, it is what it is. Ooh, you don't have it on here. Oh, yeah, you do have it. We'll talk about it later. But yeah, oh. they have other things that I'm very happy they're doing, but for headsets and stuff, a couple people are going to buy these, but they'll be $40 in three years at a GameStop Black Friday deal. And maybe, you know what? I'll say maybe I buy one. I shouldn't be buying one because I have a good one. But if this breaks, hey, if I'm desperate, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's always what you want to hear. If I'm desperate, sure. Um, <laughs> famous last words. Yeah, famous. Let's go to the start of the show. Now. An hour, 15 minutes uh, in. Let's yeah, go. An hour, yeah, an hour. Yeah, an hour. And, Gotta yeah. love our episodes. Yeah, yeah, I love them. I love it's. I mean, I look forward to them every time. Now, I want you to uh, read that single sentence I have right there for me. Start of the uh, show. Can you, do you see the doc? Oh, yeah, with the question marks? Yes. All right. Game Pass is n -n 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 not selling gay. <laughs> okay, first off, I did not expect that. That was amazing. Second off, <laughs> were you shocked at all to read that shocking? When God, you put yeah. games on campus, they don't sell more. It seems like people were. Um, let's go to the actual story. One so, plus one equals two. two. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we're talking about Game Pass. Of course, we're talking about the CMA argument that is ongoing, that has been ongoing for a very long time, and that they're having to make the case um, why they're not going to be a monopoly, why they're not going to immediately like make a monopoly once they buy Activision Blizzard. This is all the UK board that they're t uh, speaking with. Um, I am, of course, not a legal expert, so if I get anything legally wrong with what I'm about to say, I do apologize, but this is going to be everything that I will be discussing from here on. I have the full CMA um, document right here, and I'm going to read specifically what they have written for this specific um, kind of snafu that happened throughout the industry that everyone was reporting, like, apparently Game Pass doesn't sell games. So, this is 5.61 on the CMA um, article. Microsoft uh, has submitted... Uh, an internal analysis that shows redacted percent decline in base games sales 12 months following their addition on Game Pass. And this is their assessment. Uh, this is, sorry, our assessment uh, by the CMA. We consider that Microsoft's telemetry data and the internal analysis presented above have some limitations. The time period over which Microsoft appears to infer that buy-to-play purchase constituents Substitution is quite long, up to one year. Moreover, the observation that Game Pass consumers continue to purchase buy-to-play games uh, during the period is more consistent with complementary than substitution. Sorry, complementary, complementary than substitutability given buy-to-play purchases continue even during the subscription per period. It is unclear from Microsoft's submission whether and to what extent. The proportion of consumers that make buy-to-play purchases within a year of closing their subscription is different from the proportion of consumers making buy-to-play purchases that never had a subscription in the first place. Now, what did, the fuck did I just say? Pretty much, yeah. pretty much the summarization is there is no clear analysis that following the enter into Game Pass, there is a substantive decline but it is unclear from that decline how many even had the subscription in the first place. 
So mm. they're saying from the uh, pool, how many of it actually matters? Because how many of the people are actually using it on Game Pass and aren't playing it or just never would have bought it in the first place? Now, I will say I wish I saw that percentage. I know they're redacting these things, but it kills me that it's redacted. I can't. It's definitely a double digit. I can't tell if it's it does. I don't know. I, I don't I, I feel like it's not even worth it to try and guess. But yeah, not um, it. but it is very, very, very interesting. Uh, clearly, they are trying to uh, make a case here um, with if they really want to buy this. I will be f- uh, flabbergasted. Well, I mean, I guess they had to say this, but. Uh, you, this is not a advertisement that you'd want out there for devs specifically. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone in the uh, general games industry, as in like medias and people like us, uh, it doesn't matter if they sell to us. But if you are a, uh, let's say a take two, and you have a big game that's coming out, and you think about paying a game pass, you're like, well, we might like lose sales, and then you have to ask yourself, well, is the loss in sales worth it? Because we weren't going to probably sell those co- copies to begin with, you know. And they, so. I'm sure there is a giant internal debate throughout many um, dev studios about this specific claim here, but there is, I'm sure, a very large decline when it's on Game Pass, because why would you buy it if it's on a free subscription? What did you make of all this? Uh, This feels like a a bit of a nothing burger, uh, where it's less that the thing that they're admitting is news is more probably it's probably more news that they're admitting it yeah. um which even that is kind of like they're in a court thing like they gotta mm. leak some stuff for the sake of transparency um so i get that but it's not really surprised like you said i will say yes xbox game pass is going to cannibalize game sales because of course if you have access to something for cheaper you're going to go with that route but i do think it helps with player retention it helps with you know, there's a lot of benefits to Game Pass. If everyone's playing your game, even if they didn't pay for it, you know, I'm going to use a really weird example that does not make sense. You know how Tyler Perry got famous? Um, Do you know at all how he got famous? Like where he I started? Did a, I did at one point. I forget who told me. I think my old friend Tim told me. I, I don't remember, though. Hmm. Tyler Perry, he was doing plays. Like, oh, my God. I was low say budget that. plays. Yeah, exactly. That's plays. It. Yep, plays. He was doing these very low budget plays, you know, not like filling up huge theaters or anything. But the recordings of these plays, I swear to God, were bootlegged and passed around every barbershop in America, it felt like. And all of us were like, oh, we fucking love Tyler Perry. So people started going to his plays physically, selling out arenas, you know, really popping off. And then he's like, well, maybe I can make a movie out of this. Made millions with Diary of a Mad Black Woman, the, or the first one, and just kept the movie empire going. Now he's making TV shows. And now he's at the point where he has this giant fucking complex that's built on top of an old plantation with like all these sets and a model replica of the White House and all this other shit there. The point I'm making is we were passing this shit around for free for like two or three years before he was really popping off. That's Game Pass right now. Or if you take something like The Senders is a really great example where I can't tell you how many people are like, oh, The Senders, one of my favorite games, and I only would have found it because of Game Pass. They are getting so many players, and that is translating to, hey, I don't have an Xbox. Pick it up on PlayStation. Pick it up on Steam. Pick it up on Switch because it just got a port there not too long ago. These games are getting more word of mouth. They're getting more exposure. And then also, once it leaves Game Pass, because some of these games do leave, and you're still itching to play it, or you want to go try it and it's left, that's more motivation to say, oh, all these people are talking it up. Let me go buy it now. And then the sales jump up after it leaves. So there's always something there is the point I'm trying to make. Um, there's benefits to Game Pass. But yeah, if you have access to anything for free, I'm not going to go buy a box set of Stranger Things. The fuck are you talking about? I'll boot up Netflix. Yo, I'm kind of the same way. I wish I wasn't. But like when I see um, uh, Game of Thrones is a good example. I'm like, I have HBO Max. Why would I ever buy? And I should, And I should because... I shouldn't just pay for these things. In tec- some cases, I technically don't. You might, but if, if it's something you really care about, you probably want to buy that DVD because I know Arrested yeah. Development's leaving Netflix and they helped co-produce yeah. the last season. So it's like, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah. Talking yeah, about yeah. practice? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I do have one more note. Um, uh, 5.64, Microsoft internal documents recognize that adding titles to Game Pass would lead to capitalization of buy-to-play sales. That's redacted. There are three different internal things. There's an email exchange and two different documents that all state this. All of it's redacted. Mm. We can't see any of it, unfortunately. Um, 
uh, and and I I really wish because I want to know what it says. Um, but internally, they are specifically saying yes. We know adding to Game Pass means no sales, which I imagine again not shocking to anyone involved. Microsoft themselves are probably like, we don't care if it sells. We want people on Game Pass, and then we'll we'll fork over the money they either would have made or we'll pay you more than you would have sold anyways. Uh, because it seems to be um, that. Xbox still behind in this generation, so they are still trying to make money in the back end on Game Pass. And it also opens up a different uh, avenue for people on Xbox One where like they can still kind of keep up with people because of Game Pass and they can uh, do these things. And they're also working with um, Xbox Cloud Gaming. So like you never technically have to buy a new system. You could just use that. Uh, it's the same thing that NVIDIA is trying to do. So these are all trying to justify why Game Pass is even a thing anymore. I do. F I do want to see the end game i've always said this and i'll say it again i want to see the end game what does microsoft want from this what what is the end goal is it x amount of users is it get on playstation is it uh fully expand because phil himself said he knows he's at a point where he is stuck with what he has on consoles he doesn't think he can get any more people so that's why they've heavily pushed in the pc so now they're going to work on xbox to pc and then what do you keep that going? Do you try to get on Switch? What what's the I think they're getting, what is what is what do they want? I'm curious. I think they're I mean they're gonna take that streaming stuff into the next level. They're gonna yeah. try to get on Switch, they're gonna try and get on PlayStation, but more importantly, put that on all your phones, get that working on uh, on the Apple side completely. Um, yeah. you know, be on all the TVs, all the smart TVs in America. Like that's where they're getting. Once it's once the ease of availability is everywhere, you will get all the users possible. And then from there, hopefully the cavalcade of studios they've been acquiring is also built up. And then also when you talk about like on the dev side, like I've heard from one or two tweets that Game Pass is kind of a way that these companies build into their strategy where it's like, all right, we put it out. We have a big release. Everyone cares about it because it just came out. Then the trails start trickling off. And then when the trails start really bottoming out, that's when you approach a Game Pass or let Game Pass approach you and say, hey, we'll give you this amount of money, be on the service, blah, 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 blah. You get a boost in numbers. You get a boost in exposure. And then you get that big lump sum canceling out the sales that you would have gotten. And now you have that lump sum and you have more interest. And then maybe it's been a year or two, whatever exclusivity agreement has expired or you've done port work. Now you can put it out on a different console and it's sitting Game Pass on the same day. You got it on both sides. So like I said, there's a lot of benefits to Game Pass. They, they're they smart about it. The folks at Xbox slash Microsoft are very smart about it. They're going to expand this thing in a smart way. I just want to see what happens when the big guns are here because it still feels like early Netflix when all they sold was DVDs and now you can stream the fucking office or whatever. It, it feels <laughs> like those early days before they had their Stranger Things, their Oranges and New Blacks, all that stuff. So once we really get the fucking shit going, once we get an Enola Holmes one and two, because <laughs> I like Enola Holmes. I um, like the, uh, Enola Holmes really too. Yeah, I got to finish Enola Holmes too. I got like halfway through it and fell asleep. Not because it was boring, because it was 3 a.m. So yeah. I want That's to bring up um, something that now is seemingly a lie. Maybe it isn't. Um, this is uh, pretty long ago. This is uh, 2018, Rebecca Valentine on Game of Thrones when she was still there. Um, this past weekend's XO18 event was arguably a two hour long advertisement for Game Pass, given what uh, Microsoft Gaming uh, VP Phil Spencer has to say on the server Espresso in a video interview with LevelUp.com. Spencer says that putting on Game Pass actually increases sales of the individual game. This seems counterintuitive as the $10 Game Pass subscription gives securities access to uh, a game, any game on Game Pass without actually purchasing it. But Spencer says the reason is because Game Pass players effectively function as word of mouth advertising for the game, prompting those without Game Pass to buy it. Quote, when you put a game like Forza Horizon 4 on Game Pass, you instantly have more players of the game, which is actually leading to more sales of the game, he said. Well, some people have questioned that when State of Decay 2 launched, you saw if you looked in the US at the NPC, you saw this game selling really well. Uh, the month that launched on Game Pass. You say, well, it isn't everyone just going to subscribe for $10 and go play this thing. But no, gamers find things you play based on what everyone else is playing. What's number one on Mixer? Lol. What's number one on Twitch? What's my favorite friends list uh, playing? What are you uh, people saying on Discord? They go everywhere when the games hit something like Game Pass with all these players and silly ways is awareness, end quote. Now, you can read into that as a lie. I think it is a deft navigation of the question. Um, uh, 
he's using a launch example of a new game um specifically and also two xbox titles specifically yeah. as well so i think he's uh very being very depth of what he's saying he's like well i mean this it did sell that week um and if i remember right static i don't remember when static k launched that was a pretty weak month i think if i remember correctly. yeah not a lot of competition um, out there uh so i understand what he's he is uh i i don't think it is literally a lie but it's the same way that uh, you can say uh, Donald Trump didn't literally make people invade the Capitol on January 6th. No, he, he probably didn't, didn't literally, but... He didn't puppeteer him, but heavy influence. Heavy <laughs> influenced the outcome of the events, right? So, For sure. All, all this being said, all this uh, being digested, and it's quite a lot, and we could have a whole show just on the provisional findings report, um, but I'll save everyone uh, the boredom. Uh, I'll say this. Um, Game Pass, I don't think, is sustainable currently. I don't think Game Pass is sustainable currently as we know it for AAA releases, specifically on funding them and getting them to market. Um, Microsoft just cut 10,000 10, jobs. Yes. So maybe we can... If they're not seeing return on Game Pass, what does that mean? Do they stop making AAA games? They now have to fund all these studios as they own them. So where's the money come from? I'm assuming from where they're saving from everyone they just cut. Uh, it doesn't seem like we're getting great uh, return on investment with at least some of our titles, right? I, I did Hi-Fi Rush sell a lot? Maybe it did. I don't know. Did it get a lot of people to Game Pass? Maybe. I'm just curious what a success for that looks like. Is it the amount of boosted subscribers you saw? Is it the thirty dollar purchase that some people bought? Um, because I, I think uh, Hi-Fi Rush is gonna have cult classic status. I think yeah. it got a it got a pretty big boost with the initial surprise reveal and instant availability. I know it was selling pretty decent on Steam. It was beating yeah. uh, Forsaken for Christ's sake. But I think what's really gonna come with that one is no one's gonna a couple people probably subbed the game pass immediately for hi-fi rush because it was new and exciting yeah. but i think it's gonna come around game of the year season and we're still gonna be talking about hi-fi rush mm. and people are gonna come around and be like you know what hi-fi rush is there and now starfield's out hopefully now red falls out there's gonna be like i said or like they've been saying there's gonna be a list of games where it's like well fuck, i gotta get game pass and it's gonna be easier to play it on a native console so boom here we are and we are still, like you mentioned earlier, in that period of it's still kind of free to have Game Pass, right? I haven't really paid for Game Pass in quite a while. I, I spent a dollar to transfer all my got a gold to like four years in advance. And I've bought like a couple three month things when I have like extra credit at a store like a GameStop mm. or something. Like if I have extra like coupons or something i'll buy like a three month i think thing. i get charged in april actually um, actually i'll spend some microsoft points never mind <laughs> yeah yeah there you go i mean like i'm not paying for this thing really so like i'm sure there are people that are but like i'm sure a lot of people did the throttle thing and are still aren't paying so like curious like when people are start paying like how much money that is and also i will say this phil fester said this um last uh november i believe he said prices will increase that's all he said though so like what does he mean Game Pass is not going to be 10 bucks in three years. I do not think that that's going to be the case. So it's going to be 15 and then Ultimates 20. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I honestly, that's still a good deal. It is. I think Game Pass could be $60 and it'd still be a good deal. But that yes, would never happen. Honestly, that would yeah. never happen. But I think it'd still be a great deal for me because uh, just thinking, um, I have Atomic Hearts, which we'll talk about in a second. And I have um, Wulong Fallen Dynasty. In the next two months, that's two sixty dollar or seventy dollar games that I don't have to buy. My purchase for the year is already justifiable. Mm -hmm. So it's like I would I would gladly spend forty five dollars, sixty dollars on this a year because it or uh, sorry um um like um Ooh, what, you got how it. do I say you're this? thinking of a no, game. Like, yes, I would gladly spend triple the price a month if I needed to. If I needed to spend 30 yes. bucks on Game Pass, that's fine. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, what's that? So 30, 12, so 360. 360 is six games. Six or less than that because they're $70 now. So it's yeah. like five games. I play more than five games a year on Game Pass. So Certainly. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Part of me, really, this just is down to, I wish all these subscription services and such 
did not try to bottom out their price as much as possible to get so many people in and then raise the price. Pay what it's worth the first time. The Netflix way. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Netflix started it. Oh, well, you're saying that's what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. That's what they do. I feel like that's what they do. They saw Netflix and they were like, okay, we'll start at low. And then we just every, every like three months, three years. years. Yeah. Like just a yeah, little, little, little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I hate that. I wish, so I wish Netflix just started as like 20 bucks a month immediately. And then, and then yeah. that just that cuts it out because then it's only for people who actually want to be there, and then people aren't surprised when shit gets jumped up. And it's still a great deal if you really care about it. I just wish all these companies did that. Um, but at the same time, I got three months of play, or I got three years of PlayStation Plus because I jumped in on that deal before it turned mm. into the new one. So um, I don't know. Maybe I'm part of the problem, not the problem. <laughs> whatever. Who knows? Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. We'll see. I, I think that's all I have to, to add. It, Game Pass is insanely cheap. It's going to be more expensive. Um, it needs to be, frankly, uh, because just the math is doesn't work, really, mm -hmm. I don't think. To, to play really Shadow Warrior 3, games. Definitive Edition on Game Pass today. Game Pass, yeah. We'll talk yeah, about that, too. It's a good too. game. It seems Push Square may have caught either an error in perception or a potential leak of the next Sony acquisition in the games industry. We uh, see over at Greenhouse.io that there is a job listing for a senior dialogue designer at PlayStation Global. And the job entails um, that they will be working on, quote, major AAA projects alongside our partners at studios such as Naughty Dog, Santa Monica Studios, Guerrilla Games, Fire Sprite, Ballistic Moon, London Studios, Housemark, Media Molecule, Insomniac Games, Sucker Punch Productions, and more, end quote. Now, the obvious standout here is that PlayStation wholly owns all the studios listed except for Ballistic Moon. Now, this seems difficult to place as their LinkedIn page uh, says that they are working on, quote, uh, uh, a with a world leading publisher, end quote. If there needs to be more evidence that they're at bare minimum working with PlayStation, a resume for an actor who did motion capture for the game lists their placeholder as, quote, Project Bates, end quote and the motion capture director as Joshua Archer, who worked on both Until Dawn and Horizon Zero Dawn. Ballistic Moon was founded in 2019 by industry vets Neil McGowan, Chris Lamb, and Duncan Kershaw. They've all worked from titles ranging from Until Dawn to Heavy Rain to Sleeping Dogs, and they have yet to release a game, or even tell us what a game that they're working on is. Um, mm. Curious if you first saw this, as it didn't seem super reported on, because honestly... It's the, the the actual thing is a bit weak. Um, yeah. If we're being honest with ourselves, uh, this could have been a intern mistake. Um, they are working with them, but it could uh, it could be in a second party, a situation mm -hmm. where they're just making an exclusive game. I think, I think at bare is, yeah. I think at bare minimum they're working with PlayStation. Do we jump to the acquisition? Not uncommon to the Sony we know as now as previously. They really only bought studios that they worked with. Uh, for a very long time. Let's not forget Insomniac. So they worked with them for a very long time. They mm -hmm. went to Xbox, said, fuck that. Let's go back to PlayStation and, and get purchased. So <laughs> they got bought by PlayStation. Uh, they like to really test out uh, their purchases before they actually buy things. Uh, now, that's not super common. Now, as they bought Haven, and they haven't even made anything. They're pretty much a brand new studio, and they just straight up bought them. Uh, and sure. they're working on like engineering cloud-based technologies, and they're barely... This is rude. I, I don't mean it the way, but like they don't even it sounds see, like they're making software more than art. Thank you. They, they don't even look <laughs> like they're making games. It looks like they're just mm -hmm. making a new way of making games or engineering games. Doesn't seem like they're making a game, but and could I be will say wrong the Haven, pr all the stuff Haven's doing with like cloud based technology sounds really good for the same company, PlayStation, who owns Insomniac and Bungie, both really big about work from home. So like it seems like they're trying to be the forefront and they see the vibes changing. I, and I do like that you, you just brought up Bungie. That's another example of not really being the way they use. They, they usually don't just buy big studios like that, right? Um, they were able to steal Insomniac for way less than the price they bought Bungie. But so they're not known for really doing these things, but recently they are. So honestly, I wouldn't be shocked that they purchased them, but I would be shocked if this is like the way we found out about it. If I'm being honest, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, no I, I won't be nothing. shocked if they work with them. And in two years, they're like, oh, we're buying them after they release a the game or they have finalized the project with them or something. Yeah, certainly. Nothing else that? Uh, not too much. Ballistic, it's fine. Ballistic Moon. I was trying to look it up and see what they've done. And it's cool nothing. that they've, you know, <laughs> until dawn, heavy rain. 
games that in concept i like until dawn heavy rain in concept i should like probably not in action if i was to actually play it yeah. um and sleeping yeah. dogs i love so so good. good pedigree so good uh um uh, upon researching one of the articles referenced someone working on a harry potter chamber of secrets i was like all right interesting pull <laughs> i don't know why you had to bring that up but all right you had to justify Man, his deep googling uh, he had to yeah. do <laughs> he's like i've been on moby games for hours i need to i need to put <laughs> another game on this um at- atomic hearts is set to release on february 21st and it seems the composer of the game has donated their fee directly to the australian red cross which is directly helping um in aid with ukraine with that donation came a lengthy post on Twitter that you can find on at Mick underscore Gordon. But to summarize, he says uh, the war in Ukraine is, quote, a brutal and unjust invasion, end quote. And he stands with the Ukrainian people while also mentioning working with Munfish was great. Quote, I'm eager to see and hear my musical con- contributions come to life in the final game, end quote. Now, of course, Munfish is a Russian studio, but it is headquartered in Cyprus. But they have a bunch of different locations and they also work with a bunch of different studios. But was originally a Russian studio located in Moscow, but most recently was um, and is still looked at as a Russian studio, uh, especially given they're creating a game set in the Soviet era alternate universe. I don't know if you know um, too much about Atomic Hearts. Upon researching this, apparently it's um, and I didn't even know about this. Similar to like Wolfenstein, where it's like um, an alternate um, timeline. So Russia, uh, the Soviets um, discover um, plastic in like 1939 and that wow. leads them to a path of like figuring out like robots and like making like the all these things and like getting to a Ooh. point where like we pick up in atomic parts which i was like whoa did not expect the depth from this game <laughs> i thought this was going to be a crazy wolfenstein like thing but uh, um uh, it more. seems yeah it seems like there's deep lore it's actually on their website if everyone wants to go find that just go to munfish go to the oh. um i think it literally is called lore page and it has a timeline it was actually kind of interesting uh it, it jumps, but like that, you know, it's fun. It reminds me actually of, um, oh my god, um, the PlayStation Studio that made the um werewolf game. Um, was it Tony London? No, oh, uh, right. uh, uh, fuck me. Uh, so not Tony Order eighteen eighty six. Order yeah, eighteen eighty six. But of the game. Oh, ready at dawn. Ready at dawn. Ready at dawn. Thanks so much. Yep. Um, but that reminds me of that. Where like it's an alternate universe, and it jumps to conclusions. But the, you know, that's kind of the point. It's fun. Um. But what did you make of this? Do you think this is the beginning? Because I do see murmurings, although I don't see anyone, honestly, that matters. Not to be rude. Um, but I don't see anyone that matters saying that they care that Munfish is making the game. Do you think this might be a quote-unquote controversy? That if you pay for uh, Atomic Hearts, you are technically funding Russian Vision, as I believe um, they are technically... They have sets in Russia... Uh, they have to pay taxes to the Russian government. Yeah, this is a case where, like we said earlier with the J.K. Rowling stuff, if you have a specific villain to be mad at, it's easier to be mad at it. And even though we do have a very prominent prominent villain in the case of the Russian Ooh, excuse me, there's that Bert from earlier. Um, even though we do, ha- yeah, <laughs> it just took a while. Um, we have Putin as our I'm, obvious I'm gonna, villain. I'm gonna um, yes. timestamp the burp. I'm going to put yeah. timestamp you... beginning of burp and then end of burp. <laughs> so you can see how long it is. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we have Putin as like the clear figurehead for people to put their hate on. But it's harder to connect Atomic Heart directly to what he's doing because, you know, it's just one company, one corporation. And also understand, even though they're not located in Moscow anymore, saying anything against Russia can be deadly. Especially if you oh, yeah. have a massive platform or just have a it's lot illegal. of eyes on you. Yeah, it's, it's illegal. It's illegal to criticize the war. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, don't necessarily blame them for not speaking up about it. Um, you know, we got to understand that, yes, there are people who are eating up all the propaganda that's pushed to them in this in that country. But if there was people, or there are certainly people who don't agree with the propaganda, you will never hear from them. You, you won't hear from them until the state is toppled over. So, yeah, it, it, this case is, is great that Mick Gordon's doing this. I think it's great to, you know, put your support behind Ukraine, put your money on the right side of history, as I like to think of it. But at the same time, I, I've already seen some people being like, oh, don't buy Atomic Heart. Don't buy Atomic Heart because it's supporting the Russian government and all this stuff. And I'm like, 
that's pro even if that's the case you think the company themselves wants to support the government like it, when they see the atrocities that are happening from their side most of that company if not just the heads or just individuals at the company i'm sure not all of them are backing that stuff so it is another case of like there are individuals making the game you can support them if you want to or you don't even have to buy the game it's on game pass anyway so just play it on there play it through cloud or whatever um but yeah even if you do play it through game pass it's like oh my, i'm giving microsoft my money and that money's going to there's them still, and then that money it's yeah. like there's a lot of degrees here where you can make it bad but um for me i'm less upset about this it is definitely something fishy's going on there but at the same time, of course, I've been excited about this game. So maybe this is me being softer on the game I care about. But it's totally just like, mm. I see something there, but not enough for me to like ring the alarm. I uh, have no problem with Russian people. And I'm sure you don't either. I'm not saying that you said that. Hell of a statement. I'm just making, I'm just making it clear that uh, all, all the things I say about the I got a Russian, Russian friend. I actually know a Russian. Um, he's very funny too. Uh, they're a funny people, but um, the, very funny people. The Russian, um, every same thing when I talk about China, talk about Saudi Arabia on the show. It's always to the government. I'm never talking about any individuals out there. Or anything like that. So I just always like to make that clear because I don't always say it. Um, and I should say more. All that being said, of course, Russian terrible invasion. Don't know what they're doing over there. Putin's clearly kind of crazy, or at least. Something is missing uh, as he just thought this would just be OK. Um, mm -hmm. And he wants to go back to uh, the so uh, Soviet era, which is hilarious. I, I remember he's quoted, uh, I think it was in 2017 in the UN. He was like, the greatest 20th century disaster was the Soviets uh, crumbling. I'm like, uh, all right, uh, that's a fucking weird thing to say, but OK. Um, so clearly the dude's uh, not with us in a lot of ways. Uh, all that being said, let's get that out of the way. Uh, going to just the game now. I'm so excited for it. At no point did I did I look at this and go like, "Oh, Russian dev, I won't buy the game now." I, I, I don't, I don't really equate that. And actually, your analogy that you made, like the game is made by individuals, the same thing I said about Hogwarts. The games yeah. are made by individuals. I don't really care. Uh, I'm buying it to to play the Harry Potter game. I'm gonna pay. I don't really care about things Jake Rowling said. I don't think most people who bought the game also. Didn't care. It's not like making a statement when you're buying these things. I know some people probably did, but I think the same thing will be here. Hopefully, this does not become Hogwarts Legacy 2.0. I pray, I pray that hey, it doesn't. I it's don't coming think out it so will. close to a Hogwarts that there's no way it can absorb all that discourse so soon. <laughs> I, do, yeah, I think that's a good point. I honestly, to be honest, I don't think the majority of game developers even know that Monfishes is a Russian studio, so... You know, I, I, I don't even think they know that. So, you know, I, I will say they are very clearly a Russian studio, but I think we abstract a Russian studio in such a specific way. We don't think about, oh, it's tied up in the Russian government. We think about mm. like the aesthetic specific to like Euro jank and that type of stuff. I think that's what people think more. They're like, oh, it's like Elix 2. You don't think of that being funded by the Russians. Yeah. I, and uh, to, just to also make it clear, um, I'm, I'm kind of dumb. I'm also confused. I thought we sanctioned russian but i think it's technically maybe they're able to say there's headquarters in cyprus so maybe it's not sanctioned so you can sell it in the united states i don't know i'm not smart enough if someone is at home let me know if it technically like doesn't count on something I'm not sure how that works um yeah. but uh i did link a polygon <laughs> article that i wanted to quickly mention here at the end so it, this is kind of uh this is by ollie welsh um and they do have something i do want everyone to go read this uh, they say it at the very end. Um, I previewed Atomic Heart last month. At the time, Munfish issued a scrupulous new neutral statement. Quote, we want to assure you that Munfish is a developer in studio with a global team focused on an innovative game and is undeniably a pro-peace organization against violence against people. We do not comment on politics or religion. End quote. Seems pretty direct, right? Seems that as, as close as what you can say is you could say, right? That was Munfish's statement? Yes, that's is Mun that is what Munfish said. Huh. Yeah, All right. We want to assure you that Munfish is a developer. This is this is them. They they did a s I do uh have a little bit of, of um That's a look, you say it's a direct statement. It it is saying what they want to say in the most indirect way possible. But they they have to. You can't say you can't oh, say I get it. I oh, get okay. it. 
But like, you know, I, I'm not expecting them to put their heads on the line to, you know, make yeah. people on Twitter happy. But at the same time, I'm like, man, that is so wishy-washy. It's funny. <laughs> I guess. I, I think it's just uh, as direct as you can be. It reminds me of um when, again, we keep fucking bringing this up. I'm sorry. Hogwarts Legacy, when they did their first gameplay thing and they showed that you can be a transgender character. The the first thing, the first like gameplay, look, they, they're like, look, you can do it if you want. Like, it's as, it's as much as they can say. I'm sure legal is up their ass. Like, you better not say X, Y, Z. If they, if, if they say something the direct, thing. then all the people who know nothing about it are suddenly like, what'd she say? And yeah. then they look it up and now they're mad. Yeah, so who knows? But um, I did have uh, a bit of an issue with, uh, because they, they say a scrupulous, neutral statement. It's like, but what do you want, though? Like, what uh, mm. Ollie Welsh, I, I don't, that's that's their name, right? Yeah, Ollie Welsh. Yeah. Like, I don't know, what, mm -hmm. what did they... What do you want them to say? I'm, I'm just confused. Um, I, I mean, guess. I understand the disappointment to the statement, but at the same time, in the world we live in, th that's all we can get, but we can be upset that, like, the world isn't in a place where we could speak our minds freely. <laughs> yes, I mean, I wish they were in the United States. I it's, just think I it's think, not worth saying that. I think it becomes... This is such a United States, American, and European issue where we uh -huh. can't fathom they can't say it. I can say right now, Joe Biden's a bad president. I can say that, and nothing yeah. will happen to me. If you say Xi Jinping when you're living in China is a if bad president. If you say Winnie the Pooh. If you say Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> they will disappear you. They will. You will yeah. die or be put in a concentration camp with the Uyghur Muslims. Right? So, like, I think it's just something that we're so detached from like that being in the realm of possibility that it's just hard for us to be like, Oh, they didn't say exactly what I want to say. So I, I don't think it's a good statement. I'm like, I don't know. I don't agree that they, they should. Well, move. it's a bad statement, but we understand the reasons. That's all. Okay. Like, if, I think if I it's can as good agree, as a statement can be, but we, I mean, I, I think even, uh, even the writer of the article understands why the statement is what it is, but we can still be disappointed in it. Just you're not disappointed as a person who's making a statement. You're disappointed at the situation around it to where it has to be that statement. Or at least that's what I'm disappointed in. Hopefully mm -hmm. they have enough critical thinking skills to think similarly. Interesting. Uh, and um, they end the article. What's clear from playing the game is that whatever political alignment of its makers, it is deeply culturally Russian product. This will present a major barrier to enjoyment for some players. Gordon is doing his best to break this barrier down, but it's a big ask. because It's from, uh, of course, the, the original composer donating his fee to mm -hmm. red, uh, Australian Red Cross. I don't know. It's it. I, don't know. I think I'm being new, too nitpicky, if I'm being honest, but it just seems that <laughs> they're just being negative overtly. And I'm like, I don't know they they said what they I don't know. What do you want from this? I, and I think you're you're mentioning well, like, I guess it is OK to say it's a bad statement, but they can't make it any better. I guess that's OK to say. I don't know. Yeah, I can understand their frustration at it, but it's it, I think it's fair to be frustrated. But understand where the frustrations lie. I think if reading this article, I think, you know, think a little bit deeper about it. It's not, oh, they're mad at Munfish. It's they're upset about the situation that you can't even say what you want to say, yeah. even if you clearly feel it. Yeah, I agree. I think I think you're good to point that out. Metro Prime Remastered I mean. has come. Yeah, I know, right? I love people who like talk shit back at me. You are really good Fuck at that. You. And, no, um, <laughs> you are really good at that. Iso Christian over at Podcast PXN and the Large Popcorn Pond. Very good at that. He calls me out, and I like that. I like being challenged. I go. don't put out my views for people to not talk shit to me. There you I go. Sure Prime Remastered has come up in the latest debate of former developers of a game not being featured in the credits of a remaster. Zoid Kirscht, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, who was a senior engineer on the 2002 title, stated on Twitter that Instead of featuring the original credits of the game, it merely has a line that states, quote, based on the work of Metroid Prime in uh, uh, inter parentheses, original Nintendo GameCube and Wii versions in parentheses mm. development staff, end quote. Wow. <laughs> Via Game Rant, the credits feature many studios involved with the remaster, like Retro Studios, which, of course, was the original uh, studios that made the game, and many support studios like Iron Galaxy Studios, I, uh, Airship Images Limited, Atomic Hawk Designs, CG Bot, Game Sim Inc., Liquid Development, Original Force, Shanghai Mind Loader Digital Technology, and Zymebot nice. Studios. All of that on just a remastered. Imagine what a AAA game and the amount of studio support studios that they have. Every now and then, look at the 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 credits 
and decide for yourself. It reminds me of Callisto Protocol, where like it's like all striking distance, and then at the end, it's PlayStation for like three page, like three pages <laughs> of how much support they needed at the end, most likely. Yep. Um, uh, credits have become more and more of a serious topic as some developers impose stricter rules to be featured in the credits of the final games. And most recently, one of the original creators of The Last of Us, Bruce Straley, has been left out of any mention of his work on the current TV show adaption of the game. Of course, he's one of the original creators of the game, and he has been completely left out of any mention of the credits and things. Technically, nothing illegal is being done, but it brought up the information of, is it in good taste? Or even Bruce Straley himself says that is a uh, reason to unionize in some aspect as... That man's a millionaire, so he has no stake in this. He probably does. I, I think he cares in a uh, personal way. I don't think he mm -hmm. really cares about the money. Uh, he actually said in a tweet, he's like, hey, I, I, it's crazy that I helped make this, and I don't see any money, any mention, anything at all at, uh, uh, from this uh, TV show adaption. And I don't know. It's hard to not feel a little bad for the guy because he's like, hey, you did help make it, yeah. and you're not Feels really. like his fingerprints are being burned off the product. Yeah, pretty much. And that Jesus, that was beautifully put. My God, what the fuck that guy? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was thinking about Men in Black 1. I don't know. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I was thinking that, too. As soon as you said it, I was like, oh, the, the orb. He's like, ah, it hurts. Yep. Um, but I, I wanted your opinion on this because it it seems like it's talked about, but it's kind of, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's being talked about in depth. Uh, no it's offense minimized. to people out there. Yeah, it feels like it's being brought up. It's like, people should be left in credits, and they, they stop talking, and they move on. I want to, like, really talk about this. So... And I know that you're the right person for that. Now, when we're talking about being featured in the credits, it is not universal for every studio. Technically, different studios are going to have different rules. I want to say take two. Is it take two? I, I want to say it's take two. Okay, or take two? No, I think it's take two. Um, there's a lot of student developers that do this. You what game I can reverse engineer? It's not even It's not even what the It's not even the game. It's like what develop what the, I believe the Callisto Protocol actually did this recently. That's a, you know, since we have a name there, close to protocol did this recently. If you weren't there at the start of the project, you're not in the credits. So like if you, if you came in halfway, you don't get featured. And this industry is run by credits. That's how it works. It's just like the movie industry. You need credits. That's why some people actually go to Naughty Dog. And I believe that's why it's getting stricter is people were resume hopping. I don't know if you you hear about that. Yeah, you're shaking your head. Heard, you know about I, this. I'm aware of the concept. People, yeah. people, yeah, people jump on to get the Last of Us credit. They work for three months, bowed out. They're in the credits. They don't care. And they go get the job they actually want at a different studio because now you can say you worked with Naughty Dog, the best studio maybe in our industry. So I want to at least give people listening the context on why some studios might do this because they don't want you to go to their studio to work there for three months, be able to say you worked on the game, and then bow out. Now, now we have a different extreme where something like this can happen. You made the game. <laughs> they are remastering it. Um, Re-releasing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and you're not even featured. That just seems, I mean, frankly, gross. I, 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 don't, I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. Here's what you do. Imran Khan said it best on Kind of Funny Games Daily, talking about this exact news story. If you're doing a remaster, remake... You're, you're taking one game that existed with all of its credits and such, and you're making it again, not changing anything. Really, maybe just sprucing it up a little bit. Just make, just boot up the original game, just fucking plug in your Elgato, <laughs> record <laughs> the credits, and play that first. Uh, I swear to God, just play the credits from the original game first. Oh, we can't find the files anymore. The game exists. Just record the video of it and play that video first when the game's done. And I'm then sure it's more complicated than that, but people. but yes, yes. Oh, it's definitely more complicated than that. But okay, like, I just I know you weren't. I don't want anyone at home being <laughs> like, oh, um, you can't do that. Uh, we know that. But, we're just uh, saying, yeah, there's definitely more work than that that needs to be done. But but we're saying you it's should worth do doing. That. I don't. Exactly. I'll be honest. That's in in terrible taste. I don't even understand how that even comes up in conversation. How do you go? Oh, uh, we need to make the credits. Can you have that done? But yeah, um, you know what? I was thinking. You know how everyone who worked on the game. Let's just put, let's just put a sentence that like, you know, mm -hmm. everyone who worked on the other game, by the way, and us, it, it just it comes how does that like, even I don't want to copy and paste all the text, but they probably didn't have the actual text to copy and paste. But still, just put the video up <laughs> like that's the easy way to solve that. Number one, 
I don't know. Um, I'd love a I'd love a comment. Mm-hmm. We won't. Nintendo does comment on these things, but I'd love a comment. And be like, what? Why did you think you could do this? <laughs> like, it doesn't. Yeah. It just seems in poor taste. I I'm with them, and I want to actually go to um, the Bruce uh, Straley instance right now because I reported on it, but it was actually a solo episode, so I didn't have anyone to rebound off of. But yeah, in that, do you think that is also in poor taste? Because he was a co-creator, but he did leave, and again, there's nothing legally binding, but like. I don't know. In your position, do you do you say even though he's not interested or not interested? Sorry, that he's not on the product anymore. Like, let's say you're in charge. Do you say co-created by Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley? In like the end credits of a of of Naughty Dog, what, what do you think? I say because even in like the intro sequence for all the episodes, isn't like it's co-created, co-created, by, Neil co-created by Neil Druckmann and Craig Menzen. Craig and I'm Mason. like, yeah, the show itself. It's. it's I was like. Okay, that's a they, weird way to skirt around that. We're, we're very right. I'm like, okay, it does kind of say that they both made it together. I'm like, and they did, but it's like Neil Druckmann made the game with Bruce Straley, so it's mm-hmm. weird that we don't have a. This is the original creator. I don't know, mm-hmm. and also, just because you're the original creator doesn't mean like you're the. I think Hideo Kojima actually is. Maybe he's a bad example of this, but I think he's a good example of, of what I mean here is like just because they're the creator doesn't mean like, I don't know, they should get full credit because like maybe. And yeah, again, he just could, that could make, like yeah. the gameplay head. Like there's a lot of people who, mm. who give you the extra advice, your writers, like just because you created it doesn't mean you're fully writing all your scenes. Right. You could just make you could give them the full on lore aspects and you have the writers that work on the main quest and maybe you oversee that or, you know, th- there could be millions of things. So it's like. I'll say this. It, I think games industry is specifically yes. messy because mm-hmm. there's so there's so much involved and there's so many different things that you can say because because there are games that the game plays the best, but the guy who created the game didn't technically make the gameplay. So like feels like they get the credit for like something they may, maybe had nothing to do with that. Just me thinking out, out of out of uh, my head. I mean, there's a reason that you get so few art tours in the gaming industry. You get what? Really, it's just like Hideo Kojima, yes. And maybe someone like a David Cage, God forbid. Neil, yes. Dr- Neil Druckmann. Um, but like uh, even Shigeru Neil Miyamoto, Druckmann. Miyazaki. You, you could, people call Neil Druckmann like a auteur, but it's like even The Last of Us Part 2, Haley Gross was right alongside him. Bruce Straley was right alongside him on Last of Us Part 1. It's like every time Neil Druckmann comes up, Yes, he's a constant, but he's not the only one in the same way that, uh, yeah. that I think a lot of people think of Kojima or even in the indie scene with your uh, Kitty Horror Show or your Toby Foxes. Like, you know, there are names there. I know Kitty Horror Show, she makes a lot of that stuff on their own. Uh, you know, Toby Fox, small team, but so much of his personal stamp is on everything in that game. So, you know, it feels like products from a person you don't get that in games because especially when you get triple a spaces there's 500 plus people touching this product they're all gonna leave a mark so even if your mark is the biggest one it still doesn't feel completely fair to say it is Mm. the mark it's the defining mark um so yeah i think when it comes back to the credits conversation um you know just put credits on everybody and the whole thing of naughty dog having an Mm. issue with Oh, people are hopping just to work for a couple months and then leave. That's only a problem for them because they're only once. If everyone had that policy, you would be totally content with, all right, I'm going to stay on my project at EA. I'm going to stay on my project at that division. I'm going to stay on my product at Ubisoft and get all the credit because I will get the credit because I'm here for any amount of time. The only reason they had a problem with this is because they stuck out and now they have to be stricter in line with everyone else. If everyone just opened it up, then I think people would be more than content with, okay, I got my credit here, got my credit there. And then if you actually had an opportunity at a Naughty Dog and legitimately wanted to go there, you would go there and you'd stay there because you want to work there, not because you just want the credit to go somewhere else. Uh, I'm right there with you. And, and upon further thinking about this, I, I, and I, I want to be clear, I'm actually, I think everyone should be unionized everywhere. Uh, oh, except, amen. Except publicly funded groups. I don't think like, fire department and cops are unionized probably because it's actually bad if they like don't work the so like union, we, we've already we talked can, about and also Holy shit. and also read a newspaper you don't want that um yeah <laughs> they already kind of do it uh so i th- that this is actually the most compelling question proposed that i actually think maybe we should have like a writer's guild or something in games mm. where like 
it, it's kind of not right if you're not included. So maybe we should do that. Maybe Bruce Shelley has a good point here where I, I don't have anything to refute it. I do say like when people say like a lot of people should unionize not to discredit the people who should unionize like QAs and these things who notoriously do get treated pretty rough because they're in a, they're in they there are usually people in the seat of power over them um mm-hmm. and they kind of take it too far and they're looked at as lesser but um in some instances but um I want to specifically mention um prior unionization calls I was like you're making six figures. It's hard to justify to me that it's like you got to have it. You got to have. I don't know, I'm going to fuck this up. Gotta My entire benefits and such. Right. So. You're already at a white collar esque job. You're already getting paid very well. In most instances, there are some places. But if you're working at like Bungie, you're getting paid real good. So it was yeah, hard for me. In Blizzard. Yeah. Anywhere that is in Blizzard. Blizzard should definitely be unionized. That place is horrific. Um, and. Uh, and when they tried to get CG Project Red and saying they were like underpaying their people, they were tr- they were paying triple the cost of what they would normally do. The same thing I said about From Software when they were trying to say that they weren't getting paid enough. You bring up the G- the the annual GDP, you put it together, they're they're paying triple the the average cost. So it's like I, I've never been right there with people because it just I didn't find good examples of unionization. But I feel like this is actually a very good one, and I feel like if you have touched something enough to affect the game should be credited so maybe there should have to be some writer skill thing that people like have to band together and like say hey if you don't have these certain things in place we're not gonna work for you i don't know Mm -hmm. but um this at least has been one of the most compelling things to me at least uh that maybe we should talk or not we but like the greater games industry should actually discuss and make sure people are credited for future endeavors because we're getting so big that something like a TV show adaption of the original universe you helped create could happen. And you want to make sure you at least get something. Um, And of course, to point out, Neil Druckmann doesn't own Last of Us at all either. So, you know, Mm -hmm. he's still there. So he's the one that's being uh, kind of brought on to this. So it's not to say that, like, he has more right to be accredited than anyone else. It's just technically no one has any technical right this is a uh, PlayStation, PlayStation product, not PlayStation. A... PlayStation owns this. I'm just saying mm-hmm. we should maybe have an etiquette or something that we handle all this stuff. Certainly. I think, you know, games are getting to that point now. It's been a good 30 to 40 years since video games have been around. We're maturing yeah. as a medium. I think if you look at other mediums, you know, you're... I'm thinking more so movies specifically is the medium I look like for the most comparisons to games. I think around this time is when you know unionization and all that stuff started happening once you realize this is an industry that's here to stay you're trying to make this industry work best for the worker yeah i think it's going to be hard now because so much of every industry is in favor of the corporation rather than the individual worker so it's going to be a hard road to hoe but i think it needs to be hoed so yeah we'll see that was a weird way to say that why i'll hoe it with you i'll (laughs) with you we'll hoe together collectively (laughs) <laughs> Saudi Arabia we seem to be talking about the country more and more every week and you'll see a bit of deja vu here as they've increased their stake in Nintendo again now back in May of uh, 2020 we reported that they took a 5.01% stake in Nintendo and last month they increased it to yet another 6.07% uh, now as reported at Game Street Up is we see them raise their stake further to 7.08% as the Saudi public investment fund seeks further diversification Let's not forget the ever-looming presence of the $13 billion figure set aside specifically to buy a major publisher. I don't have too, too much else to add as I did just cover this last month. Um, my point remains the same. Um, I don't think we're at any risk of them trying to outright buy it. I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, if that does yeah. happen, uh, fuck, we're fucked. But <laughs> um, aside from that, not reality, that probably will never happen. Um, at least I pray it doesn't. Um, it is worrisome to see that quick of a spike. I know percentage at home doesn't sound like a lot, but they are the they they are now they were the most um shares holded at that six point zero seven percent um out of uh, individual individuals that were owning it. So now at the seven point eight, they're even more. So I'm not over here sounding alarm bells yet, but it's always terrifying when you see Saudi Arabia, the people who murder people for being gay and trans, 
uh, upping their stock in anything, especially Nintendo, which is probably in a very dark way. The funniest thing of all is the they're paying for like cartoon games and they're cutting yeah. people's heads off. Oh, ban that a force cancel. <laughs> if they get, if they get a hold of this fucking company. Yeah, Jesus. Or it'll be on PlayStation finally and it'll run at a decent frame rate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, nothing yeah. else to add. Do you, do you got anything out of this? Uh, not too much. I, I, I'm, I am concerned about it because. I've heard they own so much of it. Well, they own outright SNK to the yes. point where they're making like creative decisions. 96%. So yeah. So. so yeah, they're making creative decisions over there. Like they have influence on the actual games. I do not want to live in a world in which Saudi Arabia has influence over any Nintendo product, even if I don't play their games like that. But at the same time, they don't make products that necessarily have content in there that they would find objectionable, except for one or two things. They might retcon Samus Aran. <laughs> I was about to say, like they, the they probably would. They probably would. Yeah. It, I don't maybe, know if you've like, read uh, the Quran, but it's, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some things I could see them, but at the same time, I'm like, not that it won't affect anything, because I think it will affect things, but it's going to be way subtler and way harder for people to realize something's off unless they know about the news. So hopefully they stay back. Hopefully that 13 billion is, I know it's not for Nintendo, but hopefully it's not for someone I care about. <laughs> Just I don't know. I'm I'm worried. I'm worried it's gonna be someone like Square. I'm worried it's gonna mm. be. I'm terrified. I, I don't. It's gonna be someone. You know, someone will say yes to 13 billion. I pray they won't. But yeah. if someone will say yes. Capcom maybe. I think I think that's actually a little too low for Capcom just for Street Fighter. But I don't know. Maybe well, I, Capcom maybe, has a lot mm. like fucking Resident Evil as well. Like you need a lot yeah. more money than that. Yeah, you probably need actually a bit more. I don't know. 13 billion is a lot. I'm not sure. I'd actually have to research to see how much cap going to be lost. But that's a lot of money. Like that, that is a lot. A lot. So sure, someone man. will say yes to that. So, oh, and, and I'm with you. I hope it's no one I care about. Because mm-hmm. I ain't buying the games after that. <laughs> All right. Zed updates for you. Atomic Hearts. This is Ooh. what was mentioned earlier. Um, this is going to be, of course, the Game Pass for the month. This is, of course, every month we have new games coming to Game Pass. I read them. So you know what's coming. Let's start off. With Madden NFL 23, this is coming to EA Play. Of course, EA Play is directly linked to Game Pass, which means it is on Game Pass. This is uh, February 9th. February 9th. Ooh, ooh. Uh, Gundam Battle Alliance. February 9th. I believe this was the multi... Yes, this is the multiplayer action Gundam mm-hmm. game. I wanted to play it, and then I read it was multiplayer and went, mm, no thanks. I'm going to look at some gameplay because this seemed interesting from reading about it. The so gameplay kind of looks cool, if I'm being honest. Like, I was kind of mm. interested. I was like, ooh, I kind of want to play that. And then I was like, do I, though? I Mount and Blade 2 Banner Lord Cloud Console and PC February 14th. Bad name. I got to be honest with you guys. Bad name. Seth forth on an epic adventure <laughs> in the fictional dra- Dark Ages sandbox. No, no thanks. You got, I know you people got, fuck with Mount Blade. Little, get a little more creative with the name, though. You know? Mount mm. and Blade? Come on. Mount and Blade sounds like a 2003 rap song by like a Detroit rapper. It sounds almost like you're saying Mountain Blade. Mountain oh, Mountain Blade. Blade. But it's oh. Mount and Blade. But like when, you, when English say it, you know, we say it fast, so it sounds like Mountain Blade. Mm, true. But it's only a French accent. And, It'd be slower. And Mount Indubé. <laughs> okay. City <laughs> Skylines. Horrible, please just continue. Offended so many people. Cloud and Xbox Series S and X, February 15th. I know this is going to be very exciting for a lot of people. People love the City Skylines. I'd say that as a former uh, game uh, GameStop manager, people love that game. Yeah. Shadow Warrior 3. This got a shout out from Emma Watkins Jr. earlier. Definitive Edition Cloud Console and PC February 16th. Trek across a mythic Asian land infused with the magic and technology of ancient samurai, now overrun by the Yanomic yokai from Japanese folklore. Experience the Definitive Edition of Shadow Warrior 3 with tons of new features and modes of fat place gunplay. I didn't know there were guns in this. Razor sharp melee combat and a spectacular free running movement system. Wait, you really didn't know this was a shooter? No. Oh, so you know t- nothing about Shadow Warrior at all? No. Oh, oh wow! It's ba- Shadow Warrior Three is basically just Doom twenty sixteen, but indie. Really? Yeah. Oh it's, wow! It's just I was they not put you in arenas. That. Yeah, arenas, and then you wall run to each fight. There's a grappling hook. You do finishers on enemies. Like it's it's Doom twenty sixteen. I was about to say that sounds kind of uh, sick. Shadow Warrior Two is better, but Shadow Warrior Three is still very good. 
Atomic Heart Cloud Console and PC, February 21st. This is available day one on Game Pass. In a mad and sublime utopian world, take part in explosive encounters. Adapt your fighting style to each opponent. Use your environment and upgrade your equipment to fulfill your mission. If you want to reach the truth, you'll have to pay in blood. I'm very excited for this one. It looks Me weird. Too. It looks fucked up. I like it a good, weird, fucked up game. Hopefully I'm not giving money to you also like a Do <laughs> you also like a good, weird fuck? Well... No, nah, I can't say that. <laughs> I'm not. I I didn't even. I had a joke in the chamber, but not only did I stop myself because it was inappropriate. <laughs> You're like I, I can't stop myself because it wasn't true. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can. Uh, my imagination is whirling. I do that all the time. I'll be playing like games with like people on my Destiny clan, and I go to say things that like I know a close friend would laugh at, but then I'm like mm, I can't let people like you know you don't, don't want to say something. Know. Yeah, yeah, you can't say something like you out there to some people right they'll be like i know you you don't do that and you're like all right, all right. <laughs> you're right all right all right <laughs> now these are already gone so i apologize i think this came slight I, I might have missed that last week or something i don't know um but the following games are leaving these have already left besieged this was a game preview of cloud console pc crossfire x uh cloud cons uh cloud and console i played it damn it infernax cloud console and pc Recompile, which was pretty popular, Cloud Console and PC, Skull the Hero Slayer, Cloud Console and PC, and The Last Kids on Earth, Cloud Console PC. That is your Game Pass games for the month of February. Bingo, now, bingo. Uh, a new update, Dead Island 2 moves up a week. Moves up a week. April 21st was not delayed. It was pushed, pulled forward to get, out of, to get out of that Star Wars Jedi uh, Fallen Survivor window because it was the exact same date and Jedi didn't care, so they did. They had to. <laughs> um, so that will now be a week early. Get excited. Um, cautiously optimistic. I went, I went from no way this game is good to I'm not cautiously optimistic. The, the actual screenshots looks like Dead Island. I'm not over here saying Dead Island was a great game, but it was fun. So we might get a fun, fun game with this. I Dead Island is one of the best podcast games of all time. The second one looks at least as good as Shadow Warrior 3, which is to say solid 8 out of 10. So I'll play that. <laughs> That's pretty high. <laughs> I'm very excited. Now, this is your PS Plus Extra February titles. I was, I've was i been waiting for this one. Let's go. So, top of the list. Featured <laughs> first, Horizon Forbidden West. Now, if you don't want to buy the game, don't know why you wouldn't. But if you don't want to buy the game, all you have to do is supply to PS Plus Extra. That is 12 a month? No, that's not right. Shit. I'm three years in. I don't know. Let me check. <laughs> I think it's 14 and then premium 16. Something like that. I'm, I'm looking up subscriptions right now. I'm gonna see. This is a no brainer if you want to spend. Because you can buy for literally just this month if you'd like. You can upgrade. Pay the extra two bucks or something it is. And if you don't want to buy the game, just play just play Horizon Forbidden West for the month. You have plenty of time where we still have half the month. Even if you have to justify the, the, the next month's purchase to keep playing the game, that's still almost half the cost of that. What the game would actually cost. So I I want to push everyone listening to this right now. Go play Horizon Forbidden West. This is a, this is a incredible game. This is one of the best games of last year and sorely forgotten about unfortunately so are they one of my favorite games of all time i love this game mm -hmm. his number four Am I anywhere close um kind of it's top 10 i'll say it's top 10 this is one of those where i don't want to talk i don't one of my new year's resolutions is to not talk up projects before i actually finish them and mm -hmm. then i'm just talking for a year and it never gets done right um but i have talked about before my top 100 games list I got to revise that and add some new ones that because I, I keep playing games. So that's on that list. I'll tell you that it's on that list. I do that's need right I do need to make a new top 10 list mm. as I haven't made one since 2019. Oh, yes. Yeah, time. Yeah. So it's it's time. I, I think it's, it's time to revisit. Look at the list. See what's changed. I want to say it's I think it's changed pretty drastically. So I will be probably making one myself as well. Don't think I'll do top 100, but I definitely might do top yeah. 20. Do, don't do top 100 unless you're crazy. Um, maybe top 20 if you really need to, but now nah, you're good. Um, PlayStation Premium, $18 a month. Okay. That's the so, highest tier. So the mid is probably then, 15 and bottom yeah, is like, 10. Definitely. So easily, easy. 
Just easy. Mm -hmm. If you already have plus, it's an additional five bucks this month. And then or if you'd like, just wait for the next month and you have a whole month to play. Just make sure you do this. I, I really think everyone at home, especially if you like open worlds, especially if you like good narratives, you want to be ready for when the next one comes, because there's definitely going to be a next one. There's, there's probably going to be three games by the time we get the third one. There's going to be like three <laughs> other games that come out named Horizon. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend will, this title. I will also say, if you don't feel like paying for PlayStation Plus, like two or three months ago, this game was 30 bucks on PlayStation. That's on right. PSN. I forgot about that. Yeah. So like, it's been dropping in price very quickly. Just just buy it. Experience we have, this um, game. It is so great. We have the DLC in a month. It was no like April, right? I don't uh, remember. Thank God it's April because March. I'm Hold doing on. shit. Horizon Forbidden West. Burning Shores. Horizon Burning Shores release date is April twenty April nineteenth. April, April 19th yep, I see right here. Yep, April nineteenth. Okay. Shout so out it, to Bing. Give me so, that answer fast. <laughs> oh, Chad GPT baby. Hell yeah. uh, I don't even know if that's a thing. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's pretty soon. This gives you time to play, digest the game, go straight into Burning Shores when it comes out. I'm, dude, I cannot wait. And not wait dude. for Burning Shores. Give me a reason to come back. I, I oh, oh yeah, I'm so excited. Oh, my puppy came in. How are you, puppy? Hi, pups. Her, her name's Freya. She's very pretty. Freya is a great name. Yeah, it is. We were. It took us three days, I think, to to think of a name because it was very kind of. It was kind of spare of the moment. Like she, my wife really wanted a dog, so I was like, "Fine, let's go get a dog." And her name was mm. June, and I was like, "It can't be June. It can't be June." Nah, like Julian. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old lady name, so I'm like, "I can't, can't name her June." Exactly. So, Gertrude. Ooh, Gertrude. <laughs> yeah. Oh the, boy. The quarry is your next PS Plus extra title for February. Outriders, this is pretty stacked already. Mm -hmm. Scarlet Nexus, mm -hmm. Resident Evil 7, mm -hmm. Borderlands 3. You heard me talk about that earlier. Yes. Tekken 7, Ace Good. Combat 7. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. ED. Oh, Earth Defense, Earth Force, Defense 5. Force. Yep. Earth Defense Force 5. Solid. Oni Naka? Oni Naki? Where the leave shit? I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Lost Sphere? Don't know. I am Setsuna, great game. I never finished it, but it was very good when I was playing it. Hmm. The Forgotten City. Hell yeah! The I'm Forgotten City, City, baby. Oh, Play yeah. that fucking game for the love of God. I'm gonna say it. up anything about it. Almost, yeah, you can't. It will spoil it. Do not. Mm -hmm. There are way too many guides out now. It will spoil it. Um, I will say, pretty much every title is great. Earth Defense mm -hmm. Force, eh. Onaki, eh. Lost Sphere, eh. Everything else. That's popping. That is a I'll popping say, list. Even the games that you said eh are at are games that if you're in that niche, you're excited right now. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a very good point. They all have niches that someone at home's like, oh, you know what? I, I did want to play a last and I never ended up buying it. Like, yeah. that is true. And now in an interesting turn of fate, your PS Plus premium titles are as follows. The Legend of Dragoon is going to be your PS1 title. Wild Arms 2, a PS1 title. Harvest Moon Back to Nature, PS1. And then Destroy All Humans, the remaster, PS4. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, this is the first game remastered, not the newest one that came out. Indeed. Uh, interesting enough that. that PS Plus Extra is way, way better. Like, not even close. Oh, definitely. It's crazy. That's been the case you, for a long time. It has. Isn't that strange? It's almost like they want you for extra, and they only want hardcore in the, in the premium. Mm -hmm. because I, I think that's I, literally what it is i feel like it's like a i don't remember but there's like a thing i think it's like a, a economic study that like you'll make three i think it's three things but you really want them to buy the middle one or something mm -hmm. so like you that's make exactly a what it is. you make a cheap thing you make an expensive thing and you you're banking on people not caring and just going for the middle and that's where you make the majority of your money maybe that's what's happening here maybe i'm overthinking it i don't know but that seems like overwhelmingly good like like, uh, like ten times better. That's than anywhere I'm not close. A game for the next two months, good. That is a good <laughs> point. That is no, no, no. That's a great point. You could not buy a game, and this is like you, you, you there's can, already a million great games on PlayStation Plus, but just this selection, just that's this two or three months, honestly. I'm with you. I think this is three months of games. It's kind of pushing it. I would say probably two months of like you're getting through them, but like. Mm -hmm. And then if, that's not even including what's already on the surface. So 
Shout yeah. out to PS Plus Extra. I'm actually, I was one of the people that was not really excited at all. I didn't really care too, too much. I thought it was, frankly, not very good. This, uh, I'm eating my words with this one. This is great. And I will say, even though, yes, Extra is where it's at, these premium titles are stepping it up slightly. I know Legend of Dragoon is a cult classic a lot of people love. Wild Arms is a franchise I know a lot of people love. Harvest yes. Moon is also another cult classic. And though I still hate the fact that they put modern remasters into the premium tier, Destroy All Humans is a good game. So, I will, yeah. To, and to your point, I do remember premium one month literally adding one game. So it's yes, like one PSP game. So, like that. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, what the? F so they finally are stepping up a bit. PlayStation has a, a incredible catalog of of classic games. I don't know what's taking them so long. Maybe they didn't have them prepped, so they're actually like working on them. But they need to get this going because I want premium to be more of more of a service than it is right now. Because I want to I want to play for premium because I would like there to be more of a selection of classic games. It's, it's not there. I paid for premium already, baby. $60 yeah, you did. <laughs> for the year. Three times. You showed them. Hell yeah. You saved all the money. Um, Fuck yeah. Two hours into the show, we are going into what's queued. Now, of course, this is where I ask my co-host, but not only my co-host, I ask you at home, what do you have queued up for the week? This, of course, can be a comic book, a book, podcast, TV show, a game, of course, anything. What do you have queued up for the week? Emmy. Hmm. I got a couple things queued up, actually. Um, I talked about this right before we started recording, but at some fucking point, because I got to do this before uh, the guys over at Penultimate Conquest, I'm going to be on their show doing Ooh, one of the Last of Us breakdowns. I saw, that. I saw that. Yeah. So very excited for that. Uh, I have to catch up before that episode comes through. Uh, last episode I watched was episode three. Um, I was actually over at my girlfriend's house. I got she was doing my hair and I was crying. I got insanely <laughs> lucky and got episode three. Uh, when they reached out, they were like, I was like, hey, um, I should be good for any of those dates. So, like, just let me know if someone can't fail. And they were like, hey, why don't you do episode three? And I was like, cool. And I got I'm pretty confident that's going to be the best episode of this. The series that was probably that was insanely good. So I got incredibly lucky to be able to get on there. So go check out my episode and then make sure to check out what episode do you have? Uh, I think it's six. Six. It's, so you, uh, that's the next shit, one. I'll check my calendar. It might not be the next one, actually. I think it's um, pretty sure it is the one after that. Because wait, what's today? Today the is the sixteenth. All right, so it's not this one. It's the one after that. Oh, well, um, I, I go on. I'm on the twenty seventh, so it's the one that premieres. I think got on it. the twenty sixth. Got it. Okay. So yeah. So you, so you got some time. You got some time. Yeah. I got some time, but at the same time, I've committed to watching this with her. So it's like, when do we have time together? That's the problem. Mm. Um, same thing for the near anime. I want to actually watch the near anime. And we I need to we try well. to watch it. I need um, to as well. Yeah, so I definitely need to check that out. So I have those two key, those two things queued. Another thing that I forgot that I want to check out that new Paramore album. Um, it's great. I very i've only recently become a paramore fan i listened to a lot of their stuff last year for the first time and enjoyed it want to check out the new stuff uh but gaming wise i want to try and play more god of war because i still haven't beaten god of war for christ's sake and then also Emmett. i got this i know i'm i'm Emmett. i'm a fucking mess look i i almost made a tweet about this but i oh? didn't because i was like this might be in poor taste you, know you didn't want to get canceled you can say it it's not even can oh I'd be canceled by one person. If I didn't fall in love, I would have beaten God of War by now. <laughs> oh, this is the girlfriend. See, now we all been there. We all had the close friend that they find the girlfriend. They lose your number. There, you they they start forgetting to text. And, so this is you, huh? This is this is you. You you, it's you not got me the entirely. You got the cupid the arrow, and you're you're mm -hmm. out there. The problem is, before I even interacted with her, I didn't have that much time to do other stuff. Like, I was already very barely slipping in games here and there. I didn't play that much last year overall before I even interacted with her. And now that she's here, if I have free time, You're I'm like, in other what ways. you doing? Well, I'm not saying anything. But um, every time we get together, oh, what do you know? We only watch one episode instead of catching up all on everything. We Somehow, we don't have enough time for other things. Um, but one thing I do have time for, speaking of Valentine's Day. You're just Day, shoving it in our face, huh? I'm not shoving anything. Yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> Pick up on the subtext, everybody. No subtext here. I'm a good boy. Um, one thing I'm not a good boy is, is I have bad taste. And so this came in the mail, the collector's edition of Wanted Dead. You probably can't oh, see it. Oh, of course I... you, of course. The... 
Why yeah. am I shocked? Why yeah, am I'm, I shocked? Of course you got this. <laughs> I'm that type of sicko. I looked um, I looked at that game and, and I literally thought I was like, that looks like a PS3 Emmett game. I can't believe I was right. What's <laughs> worse is that I put up the little Valentine's Day post of like, oh, I'm so happy to have met my girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. And then right under it, now the real reason of the season would have shown up. And one ten industries like liked both of them. So I'm like, that's oh, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I really want to hop in that game just so I can know what's up with it. I have a feeling it won't be worth the it was $70, but I got $20 off. I bet it won't be worth that, but I think I'm gonna have a good time with it nonetheless. No, um not. didn't something I, happen I with this game? Money. Weren't people freaking out in some way? Uh not really. They were freaking out because they were like, oh, it's like look average at this game. or something. Well, like the, the reviews came out and like some of them are like, oh, it's like IGN gave it a four out of ten. But Ooh. on the Oh, I didn't game, know that. Holy escape shit. is like I I watch I only watch the IGN and the Escapist reviews. Escapist doesn't do reviews. They don't do scores, but they were talking up talking it up like it's still not the greatest game ever, but it's fun and weird and interesting. And so they appreciate it for that. That's the vibe that I'm going to with this. I'm yeah. not expecting this to be a god tier action game or to have a great story, great characters, anything. I'm expecting it to be fucked up. And I like that. It's expected to be fucked up. I, <laughs> I, I want to get fucked up by it. So, so. so I, I, I commend you because you do seem to have great expectations and I'm not sure how you maintain them. I don't know if you're just, I, I don't know if you're like the Hulk where you're always expecting mid or something, uh, but like, um, <laughs> so like you're That's always going to be disappointed. I'm always disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. How, how, how do you control it? You're just looking back. I'm always disappointed. <laughs> well, it's one of those um, things so where I, like, yeah, you seem to handle it well. I, I rarely see you. Well, mm, that's not true. Saints Row was. I saw you real down. I saw you real down. when you yeah. came back on, uh, like a month later and were like, yeah, I haven't played Saints Row. I think that says a lot about the game. I was like, oh, well, man, I feel here's bad. the thing. I'm I will take something bad, but tried rather than something that tr didn't try that much in the first place. Saints Row mm. was boring. It wasn't a bad game. It was perfectly fine. It was very competent. I'm not trying to have competent experiences because I won't remember competency. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if it's bugged out of if it's bugged the shit and doesn't work, but it's like fun and interesting and quirky and weird. I will take that any day over just vanilla Saints Row. Described every Bethesda game. Well, uh, kind of, <laughs> sort of. Bethesda has moments like sometimes you'll get a nice side quest that's like, oh, that's quirky and unique. And that gives that keeps you going. And then plus your gameplay loop is just so Honestly, it's just addicting. All their it games, is. just about. Um, but yeah, Wanted Dead, I'm very excited for. But I know what I'm getting into, so I'm not yeah. going to sit here and cry if it... Because even they're like, oh, it crashes sometimes. So I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I remember, and that, that reminds me of... Um, Callisto, I think it was, the most recent example. Mm -hmm. um, and Hogwarts, kind of, too. Where Callisto, I was like, I'm not really expecting much with this. And when people came out and were like... Yeah, it's not like great. There's a bunch of problems with it. And also the dodge mechanics weird. And it's almost like that made it. More palpable playing. It's like, OK, I knew going in the dodge sucked, so I had to work around it, you know, like so mm -hmm. there's examples of that where I pretty much completely disregard reviews I like print. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm serious. I pretty much don't really care. Well, because it's I'll, I've played. I'll come back to first. that. I'm almost finished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish, but. <laughs> Beyonce had the better off. I can't remember what he said. Um, but um, hmm. I will say that knowing that fact was more interesting. But like I said, don't really listen to reviews anymore. It's more of just interest on what people are like scoring it. Like, for instance, um, uh, Dead Space. I was like, oh, oh, I'm curious if people like liked it as much because I felt like people forgot how good Dead Space was. I really did. It seemed like people were like, I don't know. It seems like people always bring up Resident Evil 4. That's always the, the one oh, game yeah. everyone brings up. And I'm like, Dead Space, though. I, I think it really is better, or at least is two right behind it. No one ever brings it up, and I really do feel like the remaster kind of reminded a lot of people that, no, yeah, this was actually a great, a very, very great survival horror game. Maybe one of the best ones ever. Um, But yeah, I am... I, I, to, to I don't even know where we fucking came from this, but I I agree <laughs> uh, with your kind of overall take on things as I kind of go in with just what I expect from the game. Hogwarts Legacy is an example of like, I'm shocked that it's good. If I'm being frank, I, I, I 
kind of expected it to be kind of whatever. They made, I think, Disney Infinity and some ports. So now, to be fair, Disney Infinity was huge, so I think I was kind of wrong to not expect a good game. They have experience with working with IP, not necessarily making a AAA perfect game. Yes. And this is far from perfect, but it is very good, and I don't think anyone thought it'd be this good. I mean, I I didn't. I didn't think it'd be this good. I thought it'd kind of be... The combat by itself, I was like, God, that kind of looks pretty boring. But once you get a bunch of spells, it's actually very fun. Um, it's not presented in the best way, and it probably is slightly better if you like optimize it on PC or something. But I like being able to like switch spells. I'm doing like 10 different spells in combat, and I'm dashing around mm. and stuff. And that's just an example of that. What were you um, going to say about the, the reviews? I oh, reviews? Because it, it seems like you, you disagreed. Uh, for reviews, I tend to just, I don't look at the, I do look at the numbers, but it's less about the numbers themselves and more about what they're saying. I want to see, oh, you didn't like this. Okay, whatever. That doesn't really affect if I'm going to play this. I want to see why you didn't like it. Because Saints Row is te- definitely a thing where people are like, oh, it's boring. Oh, it's bland. But to me, in the same way where I talk about Hogwarts and I'm like, it looks like just a competent game. It just looks fine to me because none of the Harry Potter stuff is hidden. I heard people say Saints Row was just fine, just competent. And I'm like... Okay, but I like all the Saints Rowy stuff. So let me see if the Saints Rowy stuff brings that up. Then I played it and it didn't really. Um, so <laughs> that's what it is. I see what you see in it, and I understand what my lens is, and I try to determine if my lens is gonna cancel out any of the stuff you're seeing. So I feel yeah. I feel I feel that. I, I think maybe I spoke specifically as I am still paying attention to the reviews. Um, I actually don't care. I'm, fam- I'm famous. Jesus, I'm not famous mm-hmm. for this. I'm well known on this show saying that I don't care what the number is. I just don't. I, I don't. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. You said that. Yeah. The Really, the only thing that catches me if there's a 10. And that's really it. I don't really care if there's anything else. Because that really means I need to pay attention to something. Aside from that, I, I'm I'm really either listening to someone talk about it. I might listen to someone like Kind of Funny or Last Stand mm-hmm. or someone like that where they'll talk about a game for a second and I'll be like, all right, I'll check it out for that. Um, and then I'll check it out for like, I rarely go by recommendations anymore. I just kind of, oh, Jesus. Uh, you're good, you're good. I just realized, ooh, I just realized another thing that I also have queued up very quickly because yeah. I can't really talk about the first time I played it, but I think I can talk about this next time. Uh, X Defiant, I got into the next uh, beta for that, so... I'm going to be playing that this weekend a little bit. Um, I'm sorry. X Defiant's very really good. Do you not remember X Defiant? No, no, I do. I'm sorry. You have to do that. Oh, X Defiant's fun. It's a good game. It's like <laughs> Call of Duty, but different. It's, it's, it's fun. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but I enjoy it. Hopefully it comes out fully and it's good, but yeah, I enjoy it. It's not a burden at all, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me hyperscape vibes, right? Like, this thing will last for 10 seconds and it's going to Oh, I, I have a good feeling it's going to die. There's a small team at Ubisoft working on this. Like, they seem like they're scrappy trying to push through. And it's like, mm, we won't like, see. What's funny is Ubisoft mentioned after this many failures that they want to keep trying. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, like what is happening some of them aren't even failures they just don't make it out what was that 1v1 melee combat uh, game uh, oh god it, it um, was very colorful in the early gameplay yeah 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 oh no yeah wait they you're not talking about the cradle the, you're talking about the concept art thing right yeah it was concept it, it yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. released or announced it was just concept. yeah 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 they just immediately yeah, killed that in the just, cradle just showed concept art like a, i'm surprised like the fight's still here honestly like that i How? imagine that would have been canceled in the cradle as well especially um, with the name called x defiant yeah so like i know they're trying to do the tom clancy thing but like it just and now their their whole art style is fucking rage too like why <laughs> <laughs> but okay whatever they want oh my god um i quickly i'll have queued up it, it, nothing different hogwarts and destiny too I, i'm gonna see if i can finish that this week Hogwarts specifically, um, I wanted to get all the achievements and it looks too, it's too much. I'm not going to. Let me ask this. Have you heard of a game called Omno? I think I might've talked about it on the show before. O-M-N-O. The the name is familiar. Yeah. I, like I said, I think I've talked about it on the show before, but I'm going to recommend you play that because you're in the middle of two massive ones an open world collect a thony whoa do a lot of shit this looks game. cool yeah and then you're also playing destiny 2 which whoa. is just a fun but a grind i don't think i know it's perfect 
Okay, I've talked about it on VGU podcast. Then that might be it. Yeah. Um, it's a 3D platformer, super chill, super relaxing, no dialogue. I think I beat it in like two hours. It's on PlayStation Extra right now. I'm gonna recommend that to you. It is a very fun platinum. It is like I said, chill, relaxing. It is a good palate cleanser between those two big ass games you got. So made by a solo that. developer, Jonas Mank. Wow, yeah, that's a name. That's the type yeah. of name you see on an album cover. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. And he's like leaning on a guitar. <laughs> featured, or you see a feature like featured Jonas Mack. <laughs> yep. There you go. Wow, this game is very pretty. Yeah, I love try the Omno. dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of little special creatures in that game. It's very cute, very pretty, and it's it looks great on PS5. Um, so yeah, that's a good palate cleanser. If any of y'all looking for a nice, short, sweet game to just blow through and just have a good afternoon with. That's definitely one I recommend. It is. I, I will good. have a slight dolge between whenever I finish Hogwarts and the 28th because um, um, I have Destiny 2 Lifefall then, but like I don't have anything for those two weeks. So either I play, I'm probably actually going to play this. That, I think I actually, oh, yeah, I'm going to go straight into this. This looks You do have a PlayStation cool. Plus extra, right? I have no. Just the, the basic, regular? I can, oh, upgrade, just basic. I can upgrade ah. to play this game. It's, it's worth um, it. Also, you can get it on sale. Because it's good. only five bucks extra or something. So like, it's more than the 20 bucks it cost me. Yeah, less you than will the 20 beat it bucks. within a month guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably beat it in a sitting, it looks like. Uh, and mm -hmm. you said it's a fun platinum. I'm yeah, the platinum. I, I'm digging the platinum. I got, so I'm doing I got all, because I played it on Xbox when it was on Game Pass. I got every achievement without even thinking about it. I went Ooh, back and had to get one thing. That's real satisfying. Mm -hmm. I'll let you go. But this was a great, yes. I, I mean, I, I mean, I say it every week. It's always a great episode, so it's nothing new. Uh, thank you so much, man, for coming. Uh, this episode always. sucked, actually. No. Yeah, actually, you know what? <laughs> I don't agree with you, so it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, again, I appreciate it, man. Please uh, plug yourself. All right. We well, did it in the beginning, I... but do it again. All right. Well, here's your plugs for the week. Um, of course, Vi Spoonful Podcast, uh, Spoonful Vids on Twitter, uh, constantly doing stuff there. I, I saw your Valentine's Day special. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm, I'm yeah. going. That's we... probably the next thing on the on the docket for podcasting while I play something. Yeah, definitely check it out. We, me and uh, me and Mario made a uh, ultimate love song collection. And that's I, why. I, that's why I was like, oh, I want to listen to that for sure. Oh hell yeah, it's good. You can imagine there's a lot of one particular artist from one of us. Um, but uh, yeah, R there's a Kelly. lot of good songs on there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Every trapped in the closet is on this list. No, um, I'm in the but no, uh, it's a good one. And we, plus, we put the Spotify playlist in the description of that episode. So if you want to get the tunes directly, go ahead and check it out. Uh, welcome to the thing is still going strong. I'm very, very, very happy with the last episode we recorded of that. I had one of the greatest jokes in the fucking world on that one about rap snacks. If you don't know what rap snacks are, listen to watch, watch welcome to the thing or really listen to it. There's no video version. We just, it's a podcast. Go. Um, so yeah, very proud of that show. Uh, I'm hoping to hook up with those guys when we go to PAX, uh, oh, at the end of March. Actually so, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Gabby's going to be really weird when it's just me and two dudes going at it just in the corner like what happened <laughs> um but no uh yeah we're, we're gonna link up uh, i don't know if there's a meetup or anything but if mm. you see us say hi i'm gonna buy a shirt before we leave so i'm identifiable um and so that's i'm emin walkage jr from and it's everything you're on <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it goes to the back of your shirt <laughs> <laughs> good god yeah it's just a lot um so yeah that's happening and then vgu.tv we're in a bit of a low spot right now usually we do game of the year stuff right now but because i work nights and no one else does it's hard to get all four of us together to do these game of the year podcasts Yikes. so we've we've done two of them we still okay. have the last two to do and then all of our categories are done and then we put it all up what i'm probably going to do sometime probably towards the end of march somewhere in there we're going to just put it all out in one week instead of stretching it out to the whole month of february like we usually do let's put it out in one week Put all of our things there. Right now, I'm trying to write up my personal game of the year things because even though we had that podcast, I thought about it more. I missed the game or two. So I swapped that, that arrangement around for Ooh. my final written list. Um, and then I even have categories for my personal list too, like games of yesteryear and things I didn't play that I really want to. So yeah, I'm going to be writing that soon. So look out for that in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, just give us a minute. We're trying to figure things out. Me working nights has been annoying for scheduling things with people. So perhaps I won't be working nights too much longer. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on right now. Bingo, bingo, boingo.
check out for updates on VGU underscore TV on Twitter when that stuff goes out. And that's it. And I want to thank everyone for listening. Remember, you can do all the normal things. It's always free to like, comment, subscribe, do any of those things. Tweet at EVM1000 or, of course, tweet at EJSponge61. If you'd like to get in contact with him and yell about everything he was wrong about in this episode, I don't know. Um, whatever you'd like. He has nice hair. You can follow him for that. Um, it's pretty. That's all I have for you. Again, thank you so much for listening. I will see you guys next week. Um, expect a... Mm, I don't know. I was going to do a spoiler cast for Hogwarts. Doesn't seem like anyone's playing it. Two, one and two. Um, I, I think the, the industry is moving too fast. I, I think we'll be on to something else by the time this next week going with the new game. So tentatively, maybe spoiler cast. I doubt it, though. We'll see. Um, that's all I have. I'll do some light testing with YouTube shorts recently. Mm-hmm. Let me know if that's disrupting the feed. I don't love that it goes into the same columns as your videos it's very distracting i feel like and it floods um certainly my regularly scheduled videos so let me know if you guys don't like this layout of that uh i try to do shorts after every episode with clips as well so let me know if that's enjoyable I, I don't like that it goes with the videos but if you guys are enjoying them let me know i don't know uh aside from that remember go chief